Reading some posts about glitch in the Matrix experiences reminded me of an experience my mom had about 10 years ago. I asked her about it again tonight, and she retold it to me to make sure I had all the right details, so I'm telling the story on her behalf. My mom was driving into the city one day and was stuck in traffic. We live in Ireland. She was looking out the window at the buildings and saw an old woman sitting in a wheelchair in the doorway of one of the buildings. She described this woman as a shawley, which apparently was the name of the women in this part of the city in the 1940s and 50s who worked in the marketplace. They were called shawleys because of the black shawls they wore. She remembers the woman looking out onto the road with a solemn expression, and my mom was particularly fascinated by her because it had been so many years since she had seen one of these women. The traffic moved on and she parked in a car park around the corner from the street. About an hour later, she was leaving the city and looked over to the side of the street as she was passing to see if the woman was still there. All of the buildings were run down and boarded up, including the doorway the woman had been standing in. She said that the buildings looked entirely different to how she had seen them just an hour before. My mom has always thought of this as sort of a seeing through the veil type of thing. But could it be a glitch in the Matrix after all? I'm wondering if anybody has any information about the Omni Bedford Springs in Pennsylvania. I live very close and I used to go there daily to swim. It flooded when I was a child. In the early 2000s, Omni bought it and restored it, while adding on as well. Construction workers reported many strange occurrences. It was James Buchanan's summer White House. It was a facility to hold foreign diplomats during the wars. The springs are known to have healing properties. I have always felt a presence in the old section of the main hotel. I swam laps there for years in the famous pool. One day, they were filling the pool, and the hose was still. They fill it using the natural spring water from the mountain. About 15 minutes later, it looked as if a child was holding it and playing with it, swinging it around. My friend and I always swam together, and we both saw it, and then, we both saw it suddenly stop. On other occasions, we would hear splashing when nobody was in the pool. One time, I felt a huge movement in the water while swimming. Nobody was there, though. We were the only ones there, and my friend wasn't in the pool. We also spotted a gentleman at the top of the stairs to the balcony, where the band used to play for the pool, but nobody was there when we looked again. I have also sat in the library many times reading while waiting on my friend to arrive, or before I hit the road. I would hear sounds. I'm not sure what the room used to be, but the windows are scratched from brides testing their diamonds, I was told. They also have some of the guest ledgers there. All of the things that happened to me were between 3 in the morning and 6 in the morning. Does anybody have any idea what's going on there? This happened a few years ago, but now it came back to my memory because of something I read recently. At the time of this, I was working for a private security company and we were working at an event at Carisbrook Castle on the Isle of Wight. There were probably 10 to 15 of us scattered across the darkened castle in winter. It was really early in the morning, probably about 1 to 2 a.m., and a colleague and I picked the short straw of doing perimeter walk, where there is no light, not even from streetlights nearby. 
So we have to do laps of the entire castle along the wall with the moat on our right hand side in near darkness, bar the torches that we were allowed to carry. As we approached our second lap near the longest stretch of the wall, I noticed footsteps in the darkness that weren't ours. We stopped a few times to check out this noise, but we could never pin it down to anything. It could have been an animal moving in the darkness, I suppose, but it just sounded strange. The next thing happened all within a few seconds, not really fast enough for us to respond. In the darkness, I noticed a figure of a man walking toward me. He was walking up from the moat to the right of us. As he approached, he said something along the lines of, Right Greeley, then walked straight past us into the solid 12 foot rock wall. In a complete state of shock, my colleague and I just confirmed with each other what we'd seen, that somebody had walked into a solid wall and vanished. Not gone over, not walked past, but walked directly into. We raised the alarm for an intruder just in case, but after a site-wide search, we never found anything of this guy who had walked up the slope. Last October, my best friend, Tanner, died unexpectedly. I don't need to go into too many details because they're not relevant to the story, but it was easily one of the hardest hitting losses I've ever experienced. He and I shared a very close and special bond and had overcome a lot of life together. He had moved in with our mutual friend, Beth, and her boyfriend several months prior to passing away. So I would constantly come over to hang out with everyone as I lived nearby. One summer day, we all had a giant Nerf gun fight together in their front yard. I distinctly remember making eye contact with Tanner and having this strange gut feeling at the time that this was going to be a bittersweet moment. But I brushed it off as just being sad that summer was coming to a close. I felt uneasy that he had at the same time a sad longing look in his eyes that I did. It began to get dark out. After collecting as many darts as we could, we headed inside and Tanner declared, this isn't over yet. A month later, after noticing many strange behaviors, Beth and her boyfriend made the heavy decision to call Tanner's mom and have her convince him to go back to rehab. Three months later, Tanner was dead. I've moved out of state since, but I always go back to visit Beth when I'm home. One day, after a heavy snowfall, I pulled into Beth's driveway. Just as I hopped out of my car, Beth came to the door to greet me. Something yellow popped out against the fresh snowfall, immediately catching both of our attention. We looked down and directly on her front step, perfectly placed in the untouched snow, with no footsteps around, was a nerf dart. Well played, buddy. Well played. My family and I were en route to a beach in San Diego, cruising along the freeway. At the time, I was around 15 or 16 years old. With music in my ears, I found myself gazing up at the clouds through the car window. Suddenly, I spotted an odd triangular shaped black object high in the sky. Given the cloud cover, it was somewhat challenging to keep my eyes on it as it moved. At first, I rationalized that it might be a plane. After all, it's pretty rare to spot UFOs in broad daylight. But as I observed its movements, I began to find its trajectory odd. The object seemed to have its pointed end facing downward, and it was gradually descending toward the ground. Trying to reassure myself, I considered other possibilities, like a weather balloon. 
But then a thought struck me. Don't planes typically maintain their altitude rather than fly downward? We were nowhere near an airport. As our car journeyed onward and the clouds shifted, I lost sight of the object for a brief moment. Thinking that was the last I would see of it, I was taken aback when I located it again, descending more rapidly than before. Just as I contemplated alerting my family to this sight, the object halted its descent abruptly. To my astonishment, it rocketed upwards at an incredible speed, disappearing from my view. Excitedly, I recounted my observation to my family. In response, my father gestured to a formation of jets that suddenly appeared, racing across the sky in the direction the UFO had been. That detail seemed odd, yet at the time I didn't dwell on it too much. To this day, I remain thoroughly puzzled about whatever it was I witnessed. I'm a strong believer in listening to my gut. I always have been and always will be, since it's gotten me out of a few situations. One was my freshman year of high school. School had ended for the day, and since I was staying at my dad's house that week, I decided I would walk home. His house wasn't that far from school. Everything was fine, until I turned down the street where there's a shortcut. It led straight into my neighborhood. As I was walking to the shortcut, a man drove by staring at me. My stomach dropped and turned. I took this as a note to walk a bit faster. By the time I got into my neighborhood, the man was circling around the cul-de-sac, waiting for me. He had a smirk slowly creeping onto his face as I walked by his car. I tried to ignore him the best I could and just kept walking. He would drive past me and yell vulgar things at me. He kept turning around and driving past me again and again. As I turned down my street, he followed closely behind. I saw him drive down my street and turn into someone's driveway to turn back around. I quickly got into my house and locked the door behind me. I then turned around to look through the peephole so I could see if he left. He didn't. The man pulled up into my driveway and got out of the car. Luckily, my neighbor, who's a family friend, was out in his garage. He came over yelling at the man and then stayed with me until my dad got home. A week later, my dad told me he saw the man parked at the end of the street, waiting for me. He went and threatened the man and we haven't seen him since, but I'm still freaked out every time I go and visit my dad. It's safe to say, I won't be walking home alone ever again. This story was posted to r slash paranormal by user accomplished work 454. When he and his friends were playing in a forest nearby their home as kids, they encountered something that they're unlikely to forget anytime soon. Here's the story. I'm from Ohio in the United States. When I was in the fourth grade, 10 years old, I'm 19 now, my buddies and I were out in the woods behind my buddy's house. We were always back there growing up. There was a creek that we would hop over and just on the other side was a farm with some horses. One day, we had just jumped over the creek, but were still in the woods right by it. That's when we heard what sounded like a little girl's scream at the top of her lungs. Being young kids, we all just froze, thinking it was odd to hear such a vibrant scream in the middle of the day. About five to seconds later, right in front of us, a black figure zoomed across some bushes and shrubs at lightning speed. We all looked at each other and bolted out of the woods to my buddy's house. We were all in shock about what we had seen, and to this day we still talk about how creepy it was. 
It moved so fast that there's no way it could have been human. And where I live, the only wild animals we have are white-tailed deer, coyotes, and foxes. This thing was at least six to seven feet tall and was black enough to look like a shadow or something. It didn't look like it was absorbing any light at all, or that it was absorbing so much that it was the darkest black I've ever seen. I'm curious if anyone else in Ohio, or the United States for that matter, has ever seen anything similar. I live right by the Cuyahoga Valley National Park, so maybe there have been some sightings there. Even though this wasn't in the National Park, just a small patch of woods in a pretty suburban area. I had a dream that still really deeply unsettles me. I'm so apprehensive about it that I wouldn't even contemplate uttering the name I heard in the dream out loud. In my dream, I was lying in bed when my father appeared, clutching a crucifix directed toward me. The crucifix appeared to scorch his hand, and strange circular geometric burns marked his face, neck, and forehead. He told me that I had a similar burn, located beneath my left eye, although it caused me no pain. My grandmother entered the scene, saying, what's happening here? Approaching me, she noticed the mark on my cheek and asked, what's this? My dad began to yell, don't pronounce it, but he was too late. She pronounced the word and then said, is that how you say it? As she said those words, the entire house trembled. An unholy scream filled my ears, and my grandmother was violently hurled into the hallway, while my dad was flung out the window. That's when I awoke, with my head thrown back into my pillow. I felt like I had literally been thrown into bed, and that that's what woke me up. I'm at a loss as to what this all signifies, but it fills me with dread. Given my history of seeing spirits, the involvement of demonic entities in my dreams leaves me wondering what in the world it was. All I know is I don't want any part of it. I understand that many people believe that dreams are not reality, and perhaps it's true most of the time, or maybe it's just reassurance. But I can't easily dismiss this experience. It was so horrifying. Sometimes I wonder if I should be worried. This probably isn't a super interesting ghost story or anything. Just a very strange experience I've been having at my job recently. I work at a gas station and convenience store. It's an old building and has been there for decades. I've been working there for nearly a year and a half. Our staff is small, only four of us, so we all work alone pretty often. Behind the counter leads right to the back room office through a door which is usually open. The office desk is right next to the door. You can't really see the cash register while sitting at the desk. It's just out of view. Our store is busy sometimes, but it can be completely dead at others. Usually, during these dead periods, I will sit at the back desk and just relax. A few months ago, I occasionally started to hear what sounds exactly like someone setting down a full, unopened aluminum energy drink or soda can on the counter by the register, as if they were ready to pay. It's happened around four or five times total. So I'll think, wow, there's someone here. I didn't even hear them come in. Then I get up to go ring them up, and there's no one there. Not a soul. It only happens when I'm completely alone. Like, not even a car outside in the lot pumping gas alone. We have a huge, obnoxious bell that goes off when the door opens, so it's impossible that someone is coming in and leaving because I would hear it. Two of my coworkers have also heard it. My manager said she just heard it this morning, went to go ring and nothing. 
The thing that gets me is that it's such an unmistakable sound, a full, pressurized aluminum can being set down on a hard surface. I have been a cashier for years and this sound is so familiar to me. I'm sure there's a logical explanation for it, but I just can't come up with one. I'm baffled and it's the only thing close to a ghost experience I've ever had. This occurred about three years ago. I had a position as a buyer, and as such, would receive tons of cold calls and emails from people trying to get our company to try their products for resale. Also important, our company had a digital phone system, like VoIP. There was one central number, and it followed a phone tree to multiple offices via internet connection. Voicemails were available on our big office phones, but the recording would also be sent to our emails. So one day I received a voicemail from a phone number I recognized as someone who had been attempting to get a hold of me to sell me their products. Oddly, the voicemail was something like 15 minutes long. Curious, I began to listen to it. The message begins with just static and the sound of rustling. Seems like a classic butt dial or maybe they forgot to hang up when the voicemail clicked on. I fast forwarded the message just to see if anything was ever heard. And yes, suddenly a clear voice. They're having a one-sided conversation. I think, ooh, these can be fun sometimes. Except the one-sided conversation is clearly with me. The person on the phone is referencing my then recent maternity leave, our company by name, a few other pretty identifying details that currently escape me. They'd stop speaking and it would be blank air and then they would answer a pertinent question that I would have asked in that kind of a conversation, clearly speaking to me, but I never spoke to this company or this person. I did receive additional emails from them later that were clearly initial attempts at communication and not a follow-up conversation. I checked with coworkers in case somehow, somewhere, their conversation got picked up in my voicemail and nope, coworkers and husband were equally confused but with zero explanation, we all just had to move on. My grandmother on my mother's side has always been very superstitious for lack of a better word. She's not necessarily religious, but she does believe in a lot of paranormal stuff. Her mother was full-blooded Navajo, and her father was Irish. Either way, she'd never been anywhere east of Montana, and she grew up in Nevada. One year, when I was in grade school, we went to visit her. Most of the visit was pretty uneventful, typical boring old people stuff. Except she always kept her curtains drawn shut and would always peek out the window. And whenever somebody would ask her what she was doing, she would simply reply, Yenoglushi is watching me. This went on for nearly the entire visit until a few days before we were due to leave. My grandma and my then baby brother, he's 19 now, were in the front yard that evening planting flowers. When all of a sudden my grandmother starts shouting, get away from that creature, it's not safe, to my brother. Of course, being in Nevada, we all assumed that my brother had found a scorpion or a rattlesnake, so we all run outside to see my grandmother clutching my little brother and shaking in terror against the side of the house. Standing out in the yard was a large, black, Great Dane-sized dog. It was staring at my grandmother with an intensity that I have never seen before. It looked up at us, gave a little huff, and bounded off. I don't remember if it moved unusually fast or not, but I do remember that it had very deep yellow eyes. When my mother asked my grandmother what had happened, she kept repeating, The Yenoglushi has found me. 
She moved a couple of weeks after that. It started on my commute home from work. I got about halfway through the 20 minute walk and at roughly 10.10, I saw these two flying objects that were blinking red and white. I didn't think much of it being as I live near an airport. That is, until I saw them fly toward each other, hover for a moment, and then depart in opposite directions. It's something that I've never seen drones or planes do before, and it got me really suspicious. I began following one of them, and it kept variating between moving very quickly, slowing down, and hovering in midair. I kept on the trail of that one up until I saw two more on the opposite end of the horizon. I began chasing them down, one by one, trying to get videos and keeping notes on what I'd seen. The main thing that spooked me, aside from the weird movements, was the oblong shape of them. They were just far enough visually that I could only really see the shape through the horizontal row of blinking lights, of which there were three on each flying object. Each one would blink the same pattern, the red lights flashing one after another, and then a white flash at the end, occurring uniformly every few seconds. I only saw them do bizarre movements a handful of times, otherwise I was just chasing them as they sped by. There were at least five of them throughout my entire voyage, all around the town. I would truly love to believe that they were just regular aircraft, but every single thing about them was weird. I took a couple of videos, but they didn't really come out. My camera can't shoot that well in the dark. If anybody can point me in the direction of what these things might be, or what the light patterns might mean, or really anything at all, let me know. It's been haunting me all night. Back when I was a child, I had a weird UFO experience. My dad had bought a new Ford truck after his beloved Bronco had to go. We went on a visit to my grandma's place on the reservation. We picked her up and we all went fishing together and had a really nice picnic. I remember that I had this really cool Disney swimming pool. Anyway, we were all driving home when this huge aircraft of some kind appeared on the way to San Carlos, Arizona. It was not on some secluded dirt or back road. It was on Interstate 70, between Globe and Paradox. It was huge. It was like the size of a Zeppelin. It had lights all along its length, which flashed blue, red, yellow, and green in about one second. We were stunned. It sat there for quite a long time in one spot. We passed an ambulance coming the other way, and also a police officer who pulled over in our lane looking up at this thing. I was very young, but I was there with my parents and my grandma. My grandma has since passed on, but my parents still remember it. My mom calls the lights on the side of the UFO windows, but to me they just looked like a row of extremely bright lights. It stayed stationary for a long while, before suddenly moving south to the top of Mount Turnbull. Then it went straight upwards and disappeared into the sky. The moon was out and the only clouds were above the summit. I think about this experience from time to time and sometimes I doubt myself as to whether or not any of it happened. But there were three adults in the truck who saw it and the police officer on the side of the road too. I wish I could find the other people who saw it and ask if they remember it too. A few years back, 
My mom was coming home after spending the afternoon at my auntie's, cousin's, and their kid's house. When she got home, mom told my husband and I about the incident she experienced waiting for a bus. We come from a family of healers and sensitives, so I've had paranormal and supernatural experiences all my life, as has the rest of my family. My mom, although slightly skeptical and a bit reluctant to embrace the gifts which our ancestors passed down to us, has had her fair share of unexplained events in her own life. She told us that while she was waiting for the bus, she suddenly saw movement out of the corner of her eye. Across the road, she saw three young people. In usual circumstances, this wouldn't be out of the ordinary at all, as the shops are regular meeting places for all the local teenagers. However, there was something slightly odd about these young people. My mom said that they were dressed in the period of the 1970s, when my mom was a young teenager. People were milling about around them, very near them, but nobody was acknowledging them. Their existence was completely overlooked by other people, as if they were invisible. My mom was distracted for a brief moment, and when she looked back again where the mysterious teenagers had been, they were gone. She even watched the only open shop, as she thought maybe they had gone in. She waited until her bus came, 20 minutes later, but they didn't come out. There was nowhere else they could have gone in the time that my mom wasn't watching them. Mum said the most unsettling thing about it was how normal these teenagers looked, but the fact that she was the only one that seemed to be able to see them. It's a story she still tells today. First and foremost, it runs on both sides of mine and my wife's families, a sensitivity towards spirits and the like, which I believe is why we keep having these kinds of experiences. I was preparing my wife a late night snack when she jumped. She said she thought our oldest daughter, two and a half years old, was standing in the hall. I said, stop that. She said, no, not like in the dark, like at the baby gate to the hall which, by the way, had the ambient light on. So literally, she's telling me she saw a child standing just on the other side of the baby gate in a hall that wasn't there. I said that's worse than our oldest standing in the dark hall. Shortly thereafter, I said I was going to go downstairs and play on my computer for a while. As I walked down the stairs, someone came running out of the door at the base of the stairs at me and vanished. I told my wife about this, to which, of course, she replied with our usual response of simply, No. I actually had to stifle a scream to not wake the kids because it spooked me just enough. Finally, I went upstairs just moments ago and confirmed my experience with my wife when we both heard our oldest talking in her room. My wife told me she's speaking with someone. I said no, she's been talking in her sleep since she could first talk. For the record, my wife had a history of sleepwalking when she was young, so it's sort of expected. She sent me to check on our oldest, so I did. Our oldest was sitting up in bed, and then she looked at me, almost worried. So I called her and put her back to sleep. She fell asleep instantly. I told my wife and never again, and she responded only with, I told you she was talking with someone. She sounds different than when she's talking in her sleep. The occasional small experience is common in our home. Nights like this are not so common, so I thought I would share my experience. Some background. I grew up in northern Michigan, about 30 miles southwest of Traverse City. My grandparents also lived about five minutes from where I grew up, and they have a large acreage of woods, about 117 acres. Growing up, and still to this day, they have an old golf cart, and they've created long, sprawling trails in the woods. 
Somewhere in the middle of the acreage is a field, about two acres, with an old sawmill. About seven years ago, when I was about 13, my sisters, nine and eight, and I decided to go on a golf cart ride through the woods on the trails. My nine-year-old sister sat up front with me, while the eight-year-old sat on the back on a mounted seat facing the opposite way. We drove up toward the field, and once we got through the trees into this area, I drove about a hundred feet in, and I saw this figure a ways ahead of me. It was probably ten feet tall, and was human-shaped. Its legs dragged as it walked, and it was hunched over, and its arms looked semi-detached and dangled. Its face was a gaping black hole, but I saw what I thought was a dangling eye. My nine-year-old sister caught it too, and it began to run toward us. I whipped the cart around and sped home. My grandpa went out with a gun to the field and found nothing. I have been able to find nothing on this for years, and my sister and I are still terrified to this day. The only legend I know of from up here is a dogman, but it wasn't that. I don't know if anybody else has seen anything or experienced something similar. Maybe it was a skinwalker or a wendigo. I really don't know. My boyfriend and I went to visit family in New York, and we stayed at the Hyatt Grand Central. I believe that there's a paranormal world due to having experiences in my childhood home. I also know that Grand Central Station is known to be haunted. Our hotel was connected to the station, but I didn't think anything of it. Of course, ghosts can't travel from building to building, or so I thought. It was our last night, and I was asleep. I woke up to the sound of the hotel doorknob moving, as if somebody was trying to come in, but I never heard the door open. I closed my eyes and said to myself, you're just imagining things. I heard it again, and I looked up. When you walk into this room, there's this long walkway, and the bed is to the right. I looked up, and I swear to Jesus and all of his disciples that I saw a man, a tall figure with black eyes, peek around the corner. I screamed, somebody's in here. As soon as I screamed, he disappeared, and I heard the doorknob again, as if he had walked out. My boyfriend jumps out of bed, butt naked, and runs around the room. The door was locked, so I don't believe it was an actual person, because hotel doors are heavy, and you can usually hear when somebody opens and closes them. Of course, you can't lock the door behind yourself. I only heard the doorknob move, but never heard the door, so we figured it was a spirit. I later found out that there are tunnels from the hotel to the train station, and many people have died in the tunnels. Beautiful hotel, but I will not be returning. I saw a UFO, and I just want to know if there's some kind of explanation for what I saw. I didn't have my phone with me, so I don't have any evidence. But I did see a UFO. At first I thought it was a glare, but the moon was behind me and I was seeing Orion's belt and some other stars in front of me. The first one I saw was on the left. Then I realized it was moving in one direction, so it couldn't be a glare. It was going northward. I also don't think that it was a plane because of the lockdown Planes weren't really allowed to fly, and if they were, it was really limited. I definitely know what a plane looks and sounds like, and this was not it. The thing that I saw was just silently cruising in the sky. 
Seconds later, I saw one to the right. I saw small dots emitting light. It was as small as what stars look like at night, but they weren't twinkling, and the lighted dots were aligned in a constant position. I also saw that it changed its angle a bit after I saw the lighted dots. I asked myself if they could have been birds, migrating or passing by, because sometimes flocks of birds fly in a V-shape, but that doesn't explain the glow. I'm not sure how high it was exactly in the sky, but it was definitely in the zone where a plane might fly, but it was way too big to be a plane. It was cruising for a good few seconds, until it literally just vanished. Would there be any other explanation? Is that what a stealth bomber looks like at night? It was definitely a UFO, because it was an object flying in the sky and I didn't know what it was. So it was an unidentified flying object. I just want to know if it was alien or not. I'm a carer and I have been for about five or six years. I prefer to work nights as it's a calmer working experience. I've seen and heard many strange things, but two stick out and I thought I'd tell you about it. The first one. I was on shift one night and every hour we have to do checks on the residents to make sure that they're okay and still with us. So I'm doing my checks and everything is going okay until I get to the last room. This lady likes her door closed at night, so the light in the corridor doesn't wake her up. And I go to open her door, but I couldn't move it. It was as if someone was pushing it shut from the other side. I tried two or three times to open it, and it just won't budge. Fearing that the lady has fallen behind it, I go to get the nurse on shift and my colleagues. Each of us try to open the door, but it won't move. After 20 minutes or so, the door opens easily, as it should do, and the lady was asleep in bed, snoring away, and there's nothing there to have kept the door closed. I should mention that this was in a part of the building that no one likes to be alone in, as it always feels like you're being watched. On a couple of occasions, a shadow has been seen in some of the rooms. The second. I came in on shift and found out that one of the residents had passed away just 30 minutes before the night staff got there. We were waiting for the undertakers to come and collect the body. It could be up to two hours before they got there. As we were going about our job, the buzzer went off in that room. I went and switched it off and left the room. His buzzer went off every 10 minutes until the undertakers arrived and none of us could ever explain why or how it was doing that. In August of 2019, my mom got sick. She had a stroke, has diabetes, and so on. So the first time that my mom got sick, my brother was the one who stayed with her. And the second time she got sick, I stayed with her. Mostly because my brother couldn't be patient enough to take care of her again. My mom was being placed in a room that could fit six patients. There was this one time that I went to the canteen, and I bought like food and stuff like that. When I was in the elevator, a guy came in, so it was just the two of us. After I bought some things from the canteen, I went back using the same elevator, and I accidentally met the same man again, with the same elevator, just the two of us in it. We talked a little bit before the elevator opened. When it did, we heard some people screaming and crying. He asked me, what happened? Why are they screaming and crying like that? I said, I don't know, maybe a patient just passed away. If yes, may they rest in peace. I barely heard him say, thank you, like whispering. I didn't really pay any attention to it. I said goodbye to him and I walked to my mom's room. 
After a little bit of conversation, I went back to my mom's room and the crying and screaming voice was actually from that room. So I was kind of curious about who the person was that had passed. The nurse opened the curtain to prepare to move the body and I was absolutely frozen. The person who had died was the guy that was talking to me in the elevator and who had asked me what had happened. After that day, I had nightmares for a week and now I'm always pretty paranoid whenever I go into an elevator. I don't know if this story is interesting to anyone else, but it definitely shook me up. So I'm a skeptic and I don't really believe in anything supernatural, but today I had a weird experience I can't explain. I have a galley style kitchen. I was washing dishes and my phone was on the counter behind me. I was listening to some Mr. Revenant stories. I turned around from the sink to grab another container to wash and noticed that my phone had gone from the video to the comments section of the video. I looked closer and noticed that it was queued up to reply to a comment. A message was already written in, but hadn't been sent. It said, I am in danger, all lowercase. My phone automatically autocorrects I'm lowercase to I'm with an uppercase. So I was really confused. It's possible, maybe, that a water droplet from my dish gloves flung onto the phone when I reached it, but... I don't think it could type a whole message. After I checked on my husband, I called my mom and texted my brother. Everyone was fine. About a half hour later when I went back to the kitchen, I was momentarily overcome with nausea and felt sweaty, but it passed after a few minutes. I have no idea what that was. I didn't feel like I was the one in danger. Maybe just a strange, unexplainable glitch and the nausea was unrelated? Or it was a message from someone, but I can't think of who it would be. I scanned my phone for viruses and malware and I didn't find any. I don't know anyone personally who would want to hack my phone. I'm basically a hermit. I have agoraphobia and I work out of my house. I haven't received any weird texts and I don't have any apps that I didn't download myself. It's still possible, I guess, but it doesn't look like my phone was hacked and I don't have any other explanation. When I was approximately 12, our residence was a remote cabin located down an extended gravel road in the countryside. Our home was a mile from the nearest neighbor, providing us with total isolation. My stepfather and I, united by a shared interest in the paranormal, often embarked on explorations together. Our shared fascination with the supernatural formed a strong bond between us. In our house, bedrooms were fitted with rotating dial lights which could be adjusted from off to dim and then to bright. Strangely, every night, the dial would seem to twist of its own volition. Moreover, the stereo in my room would occasionally turn on by itself, with the volume fluctuating unpredictably. My parents would often hear what they presumed to be my voice in the dead of night. They reported instances of a figure resembling me roaming the hallways, standing in their bedroom, and even sitting at the edge of their bed. However, each time my stepfather would sit up and call out my name, the apparition would vanish. On investigating, they would always find me sound asleep in my bed. Once, my mother even experienced being dragged to the foot of the bed during the night. My stepfather mentioned that whenever he passed by my room, he could hear hushed voices emanating from it, even when I was alone and fast asleep. One peculiar incident involved my stepfather getting ready for work, brushing his teeth in the bathroom. Out of the corner of his eye, 
he spotted what he described as an elderly Native American shaman. He claimed they even shared eye contact, yet the figure continued walking and gradually faded into nothingness. yet become a parent, but an incident involving my younger brother still unnerves me. When he was about three years old, a chilling episode took place. My mother, overseeing my two younger brothers' bath, shouted for me to fetch a towel, allowing her to maintain her watchful gaze on them. As I was about to hand over the towel, my typically incoherent speaking toddler brother abruptly sat upright. He tilted his head and, with an uncharacteristic clarity, declared, Look, Mom, I can't die. Without hesitation, he crossed his arms over his chest and slid under the water. Both my mother and I were momentarily stunned, but she swiftly plucked him out of the tub. Though he had swallowed a lot of water and was sobbing, he emerged relatively unharmed. Several years later, as we replaced the trim in my brother's room, adjacent to that very bathroom, we discovered a penciled height chart concealed behind the closet trim that connected to my parents' bedroom. The chart documented the growth of a child named Alan until the age of five. The elderly woman who had sold us the house had frequently claimed that she and her husband were the original homeowners and that they never had children. Driven by curiosity, we decided to investigate the home's history the local library's newspaper archives unearthed a 1950s article revealing that the old couple did, in fact, have a child. Tragically, he had drowned in the same bathtub after presumably standing, slipping, and then striking his head. His name was Alan. After unearthing this connection, I could no longer bring myself to enter that bathroom, and it still unnerves me to this day. My name is Josh and I am 26 years old. I was an only child and I didn't have very many friends, so I spent a lot of time alone. When I was about 11, I moved in with my grandparents. They lived in a small town, pretty rural, and I spent most of my days, especially on the weekends, outside walking around. There was an old cemetery within walking distance of my grandparents' house that had graves dating back all the way to the late 1600s in the oldest section. The newest graves were no younger than the late 90s and early 2000s. It was pretty run down, since the newest graves, like I said, were in the 90s and 2000s. The oldest section was even more run down. I felt bad that these people were seemingly just forgotten and nobody ever visited them. My grandma owned a flower shop and she had a bunch of excess flowers. So I asked her if I could take some to put on some of the graves in the cemetery. She agreed and I took about four bags full and walked to the cemetery. I got there and started walking around, putting flowers on all the graves. I went through the newest section, putting flowers on the graves without incident. I had gotten through about four graves in the oldest section when something just told me to look up. I looked up and saw a woman just standing there, directly behind the grave that I had just put flowers on. She was smiling at me and she seemed to be so happy I stood face to face with her for about a minute, and then she disappeared. Then I went on putting flowers on the rest of the graves, and I left. I think maybe she was just happy that somebody was coming to visit. I don't know, but it was really special.
Redditor Psychological Ant 8611 posted a story that happened to him on a hiking expedition. Here it is. As a young man, I loved to climb mountains. This is an amazing encounter that occurred to me on one climbing expedition. We had left a hut late one night. The intention was to summit a mountain in a single long push by climbing right through the night. It was bad weather in the middle of winter and there was deep snow. We were trying to find our way through a maze of crevasses on a glacier. I remember the howling winds and clouds moving rapidly through the sky as the bulk of the mountain loomed over us. There was a full moon which would hide behind the clouds before emerging again. I remember seeing a man moving up the slope from below us. The first thing that struck me was that he didn't have a headlamp on. I yelled over the wind at my climbing partner. Let's go talk to this guy. What guy? He shouted back. That guy, I said, pointing down at the figure moving toward us. There was a pause. What guy? At this point, I remember losing it. That freaking guy right there. He's right there. And at that point, I looked back down to see absolutely nothing. Thinking he had fallen into a crevasse, we walked down, but we never found any tracks. There was no trace of anyone. In the years since, I have heard reports of similar encounters in that area. In fact, recently, the bones of a deceased climber from the 1970s were discovered, melted out of the ice. The news report reminded me of my mysterious climber from that night, and it just makes me wonder. In 2012, I found myself stationed in North Kandahar, standing guard one night just shy of midnight. My attention was drawn to some unexpected movement in a nearby rubbish heap. Initially, it seemed to be just a dog rummaging around, but to my astonishment, it rose on its hind legs and walked away nonchalantly in a disturbingly human manner. Fear gripped me. Upon inquiring from the local villagers, we were told that it was a yeti, part of a family that had resided in a nearby cave. They ominously shared how these creatures occasionally kidnapped and ate villagers. The chill that ran down my spine at this translation was palpable, and it was clear I wasn't the only one affected. This spectacle was witnessed by everyone in our combat outpost, or COP and it earned the humorous moniker, Man Bear Pig. Although we all laughed it off, when the opportunity arose to track the creature, no volunteers stepped forward. One midnight, as I was about to drift off to sleep on my cot, the crackle of gunfire from the Afghan army's side of the camp startled me awake. Accompanied by the master sergeant, we quickly armed ourselves and went to investigate the commotion. The Afghani soldiers explained they had spotted the Yeti and opened fire, but it had managed to escape. The master sergeant turned to me and proposed, with a jovial glint in his eye, You want to rally the troops and hunt this creature down? We could become famous. I simply shook my head in silent refusal. We shared a chuckle and retreated back to our cots leaving the Yeti to its nightly escapades. I apologize if this doesn't make sense, but I am freaked out and I have no idea how to explain this. My co-worker and I were driving back from dinner to the place we were staying at. We had driven this route a handful of times and were very familiar with the surrounding area. It was a seven minute drive from the restaurant to where we were staying. We left the restaurant and had a straight drive for about two miles. 
no turns until we had to take a right turn into the parking area of the property that we were staying at. As we approached the hotel, the tall Courtyard by Marriott sign was visible, as was the building. We were a block away from the turn, and then we just suddenly weren't. We were all of a sudden driving on a highway, about to take the exit to the right. It was immediately apparent, and I said to my coworker, wait, something's wrong here. And he replied, yeah, what the heck just happened? We were just about to turn into the parking area. I told him to pull over, and I looked up on maps where we were. The map showed that we were 20 minutes away, in the opposite direction that we'd come from. It was physically impossible. The time on the clock was still the same as it had been when we were next to the hotel. I don't understand, and neither does he, and he doesn't want to tell anybody because it sounds so crazy. But somehow, we were teleported 20 minutes away. It was the single most disorienting feeling I have ever experienced. But now, ever since, I feel like everybody in my life has just changed. Everyone feels so distant. I can't shake the feeling that something is still very off. This happened a few years ago, but my husband and I still talk about it. If he hadn't been there, I would have written it off as some kind of dream. My husband and I were walking around on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. We decide to stop for a drink at the hotel and soak in the ocean view. We walk up to the hotel and we didn't notice much until we walked inside. When we walked into the hotel, the entire hotel was empty. Nobody was there. There was nobody behind the counters. Not a single soul in the lobby. Just empty. But it also had this weird buzz of energy, as though people had just been there. There were papers on the counters, cups on the tables. We walked inside, through the restaurant outside by the pool. No one. We walked back inside through the lobby. We probably spent about five to 10 minutes there and we never saw one person. We left because it was so creepy. Back on the street, everything was normal. People walking by, traffic, everything you would expect. I have no idea what caused no one to be there. It almost felt like the Truman Show where you go off the script and they don't have any actors ready. I would love any thoughts on what you think happened. Also, we were totally sober and we thought perhaps it could have been evacuated, but there would have been people on the streets. I mean, it's a hotel. We asked around later and nobody knew anything about anything that had happened that would warrant a hotel. So to this day, we still don't know what happened. A friend and I booked a hotel room to ring in the new year. At the time of this event, I was completely sober. We were in the room and I called the front desk to ask about room service. They told me that there would be a rather loud party in the room below us this evening and offered to move us to another room. We accept this offer. They told us to get our keys ready so that we could swap them with the staff person who would deliver our new keys to our room in a few minutes. I start packing what little I had already unpacked and my friend hands me her key in the little paper holder. I pulled out my change purse and removed my key to put it in the holder with hers. This is when things got a little wonky. I can't exactly remember if I put the keys in my pocket of my sweatshirt or if I placed them down in front of the TV, but
But either way, when I came back from grabbing my travel bathroom bag in the bathroom, the keys were gone. I couldn't find them anywhere. The staff person arrived just a second after this. I go to answer the door to tell them that I seem to have misplaced our current keys and to please give me a minute. But I never do. I searched through everything in the two relatively small, organized bags that I had. I searched all the pockets of my jacket, the floor, the bathroom underneath the pillows. They were nowhere. I never left the room. These keys just vanished. From the time that I left the main room to go grab my bag and the time I came back, just a few seconds, those keys were gone. To this day, I have no explanation of what happened to those keys. We never did find them. At the tender age of 15, my family and I transitioned from my childhood home into a rental house. My brother and I each selected our rooms, and I opted for the one boasting a larger closet to accommodate my extensive clothing collection. Initially, everything seemed normal. However, as time passed, a disturbing pattern began to emerge. Almost every night, a dark silhouette would appear in my room, giving me this overwhelming sensation of dread and terror that seemed to permeate the entire room. I found solace in prayer, invoking the name of Jesus, until the menacing presence abruptly disappeared, leaving me to sleep in peace. However, this disturbing routine was exclusive to my room. If I slept anywhere else in the house, the nights were uneventful. This resulted in me spending over a month in my mom's room after we had guests stay over for a week. I never returned to my room for an extended period, even after they left. The visitors never mentioned any unsettling experiences, though I doubt they would have even if they had encountered something peculiar. Even during the daytime, though, a sinister presence just lingered around my room. I would often catch sight of a dark figure out of the corner of my eye, or somewhat directly as I walked past my room which was located adjacent to the bathroom. The figure would disappear the moment I turned to look at it directly. Years later, when I finally confided in my dad about these hauntings, his response was one of regret. Why didn't you tell me earlier? He asked. We could have had your room cleansed and blessed. When I, when I was around five, I went camping with my parents in a place called Bear Creek Reservoir in BC. It's a very isolated place, deep in the woods. We got there by driving up an old logging road. The actual reservoir itself was very beautiful and quiet. I actually looked up the area on Google Maps and it still gives me chills, even looking at it from a satellite perspective. But anyway. The day passed by without incident, and we mostly just swam the whole day. We went to bed that night, and nothing unusual had happened. But the following morning, I woke up in my parents' tent just as the sun was making its appearance. I unzipped the tent and noticed a figure standing maybe 50 feet away. The light was still fairly dim, so it was hard to make out distinct details, but it was just standing there, staring at me, unmoving. The entity had the figure of a woman of average size, but instead of seeing a face, there was just darkness. Even so, I could tell that it was looking at me. And instead of clothes and skin, it had leaves and sticks, as if it was made from them. I remember feeling very afraid of this creature, like if I left the tent, I wouldn't be seen again kind of fear. So I tried waking up my parents, and they were both really pissed that I woke them up, 
and they didn't believe me at all, until they finally got up later and explored the area. We ended up finding a bunch of man-made structures made of branches and other weird stuff in the area. But not one where I had seen it, so I don't know. Anyway, that's my true story. Let me know what you think. I'd like to go there again someday and see if I can find anything. But maybe it's best I don't. Back in April of 2011, my family and I stayed in Skyline Cabin C82, the one right beside the nature trail at Jellystone Park in Lorry, Virginia. Each of us experienced something that we believed to be paranormal, but none of us admitted it to each other until we had gotten home. As it turns out, my sister, who was eight at the time, and I, who was 11, actually saw the same figure at the same time. We don't remember the time of night, but both of us recall waking up for an unknown reason, to find a tall man standing by the bed, with his arms crossed, and an angry look on his face. At first we thought the figure was my dad, and we were confused as to why he seemed angry with us. Then, we realized we could see straight through the guy, to my coat hanging on the wall. I quickly rolled over to the other side of the bed in fear, as my sister slowly did the same. Later that night, my sister woke up again to see the man sitting at the dining table in the other room. She turned on her flashlight to see who it was, and the figure disappeared. My mom also woke up during the night to see a white orb fly in through the window and out through the door. As soon as the light went through the window, she heard a voice scream, You don't belong here or you aren't welcome here, one of the two. Our stay at cabin C-82 is something we reminisce about often, but we've always been curious if anyone else has experienced anything similar. So if you've stayed at Jellystone Park in Lori, Virginia, and experienced something paranormal, we would love to hear your story. Bonus points if it happened in cabin C-82. A few months ago, three other friends and I went out to camp near a lake. We went camping on the shore of the lake, right next to a forest that went up a hill. It was nighttime, and the sky was very clear. We had a fire going, and so one friend and I decided to go a bit farther near to the lake to look at the stars. You could see the Milky Way and everything. It was really cool. While we were there, we were talking a little bit, and I noticed a light in the forest, above where the other two friends were, and above where we were camping. It was really bright in the middle, like a white orb, and at first I thought it was a person with a flashlight. The next thing I know, it zipped in a straight line, super fast, then went back again, with the same speed. Then, instantly, it just disappeared. My other friend who was with me saw it, and we both got really freaked out. He is very religious and can't explain it to me, but still doesn't want to believe that it's anything paranormal. So I'm kind of alone in this. The other friends didn't see anything, because it was behind them. I have no idea what it could have been. The weird thing was that it was at the moment we noticed it, that it reacted and moved around and disappeared. I wonder if it had been there the whole time while we were camping. There would have been no way to see it. Only when we moved away and then faced toward our camp could we have seen it. I told my other friends about it and they thought I was just joking. And the friend who was with me and saw it doesn't want to talk about it. So I don't really have any good answers. For the rest of the camping trip, I felt really uneasy.
As a kid, maybe 11 years old, I was once in the forest looking for lost things. Then I came across a small pond, really a small pool in the forest. A woman was standing in the water. The water reached her knees. She was looking to the other direction and I couldn't see her face. She had white hair and some old looking clothes. They looked extremely old fashioned. She didn't turn to me and she didn't move at all, but I could see her breathing. I came closer and then she left the water and stood on the forest ground. As she was raising her feet from the water, I saw that her feet were backwards. I was shocked, frozen, but I freaked out and finally turned around and began to run. As I was running, I looked back and I could see her face. She was looking at me with this evil grin and an extremely pale face. I went home and told the story to my parents and of course they did not believe me. I've never forgotten this encounter and I was wondering if anybody else had any accounts of people having backwards feet. I went to this forest multiple times afterwards with my friends, never alone again, but I couldn't even find the pond, let alone the woman, anymore. The closest thing I've found on the internet is the saguapa. As soon as I saw a picture of one, it gave me chills. The woman I saw looked exactly the same, but she was extremely pale. Everything else looks the same though. I'm fairly certain that this is what I saw, but I'm also open to any other ideas. One day, I decided to go to an old cemetery in San Diego, California, in a town called Julian. This town was home to gold miners and citizens that built the town. The average year on the tombstone was 17 to 1800s, some ranging into 2000 to 2008. We went out there around the time of 12 p.m., just going around asking basic questions of anything that might be there. I stumbled on a gated burial dating 1825. I asked if he was there while someone was taking a video and pictures. All of a sudden, I got so tired and drained that I felt like we had to go. I felt like I was being attacked. When we got to the car, we reviewed the photos first. What I saw was disturbing. White, blue, and green lights flying all around me. Listening to the audio was even scarier. I heard an old man with a deep crackly voice laughing and saying Marissa, and then I heard growling noises. I asked to leave immediately after hearing this. We were driving away and about a half mile to a mile out, our car started doing really frightening stuff. The radio would turn on and off, headlights would stop working, our mirrors kept moving dramatically. The lights in the car were turning on and off. We pulled over, we were so scared. Eventually it stopped and we drove off, scared and confused as to what had just happened. When we arrived home, we could hear voices and banging in the house. We didn't sleep at all that night. I never did return, and until this day, eight years later, I can still hear that voice, and I hate driving by that cemetery. This Sunday gone, my girlfriend and I, who live in Adelaide, Australia, had just gone on a dinner date. She is a 26-year-old female and I am a 24-year-old female. We went to her house to drop off her doggy bag. Then we drove back toward my house, southward. About halfway between our houses, I noticed three lights in the sky in a perfect triangle. It was very odd and the lights were fairly obvious in the dark sky, especially because there were also stars visible, so the lights were very visibly different. 
They were a lot brighter and bigger, though not by much. I pointed it out to her, and immediately she said, Holy cow, what the heck is that? At first I thought I might be seeing things, but when she reacted, I knew it wasn't just my eyes playing tricks. We quickly noticed that the lights were moving at about the same speed we were, and had started to flash green and red sporadically. We decided to follow it for as long as we feasibly could. It was a bit of a thrill, if I'm being completely honest, following the mystery lights in the sky, but it also didn't last very long. Maybe five minutes past my house, the lights took a turn, sped up, and just disappeared. We pulled over to see if we could find it again, but we didn't have any luck. We kept talking about how strange and cool the whole thing was. I am telling my story here to see if anyone else has seen something like this or has any ideas of what it could have been besides a UFO. Our first thought was a helicopter, but there's no realistic way for a perfect triangle of lights to come off of that, and they moved way too quickly. If anyone has ideas, I'd love to hear them. I worked the late shift for this company about six years ago. I would get off at midnight and the company bus would take us home. My neighborhood was the farthest, so I would be brought home last. I should also mention that the road that this happened on has had multiple strange incidents, accidents, murders, ghostly sightings, strange creatures, just a whole lot of weird stuff. On the last part of the journey, there were three of us left on the bus. After the driver confirmed our addresses, we continued. I was at the front of the bus. A young lady in the middle and a guy at the back were the other two passengers. We got to the guy's street and the driver stopped and waited for him to get off. After getting impatient, the driver asked the lady to go check if he was sleeping. She came running back to the front of the bus, crying and praying. We asked her what was wrong, and she said that there was nobody back there, and she wanted to go home right now. The driver switched on the lights and floored it. It gets even creepier. After getting off on my street, I began to walk to my house. This was now at about two o'clock in the morning. Every dog that I would walk past kept staring at something behind me. When I turned to look, there was nothing. There was no shadow, no sound, no buddy. After getting inside my house, I looked out the window for the next 10 minutes. It was just dead silence and dogs staring at nothing. I've never been able to figure out what happened that night, but it was freaky. There's this book called Fairies, Real Encounters with Little People by Janet Board, and in it she discusses stories, both old and modern, of encounters with fairies and gnomes and things like that. There was this one that was written by a doctor in the late 1700s. He recounted a time when he was just a boy. He and several friends spotted gnomes dancing in a field. They were all holding handkerchiefs between them, like Moorish dancers. He said that when these gnomes spotted them, one of the gnomes chased after them, and even grabbed this doctor as he slipped through a fence. The boy pulled free, and said that the gnome, which he described as having a swarthy face, reached after him, but was unable to grab him a second time. They ran to their parents, who immediately went out looking for these gnomes, but they had disappeared. According to the book, Gnomes and other interdimensional beings were fond of kidnapping children, who would then act as servants in their world. Another story was actually printed in the Anchorage Daily News. A snowmobiler had spotted a young boy in a snow-covered field, all alone, 
end with no footprints anywhere. The boy just seemed to have appeared there. The boy said that he was taken into a local hill, one that local Eskimos had said was haunted. The boy said he found himself in a city and met a girl who had been kidnapped and brought there 40 years earlier. She asked the boy for help. The boy said that the Inserat, something like that, think it was the name the Eskimos gave these beings, had let him go for whatever reason. I find these stories really interesting, and I'm just curious if anyone else has experiences like these. About three years ago, my friend who I had known since birth was diagnosed with leukemia. After an intense and scary year-long battle, the cancer won. I miss him so much that I'm tearing up just writing this. Something happened before he died, though, that was really weird. I was eating some food in my dream, and my friend rang the doorbell. He had all of his hair, and he looked happy and healthy. He looked at me and said, I had a life I was going to live, and I couldn't live it. I want you to live a life and enjoy it. He smiled a bit and shrugged and said, Hey, it'll be okay without me. I'll miss you too up there. But don't worry about me. The pain is gone. He went in for a hug, and we hugged for what felt like an eternity. I love you, man he said, as his parents' car door opened. I yelled, Mark, don't leave me. Live. You have to live. He just looked at me and said, Sorry, man. I gotta go, and kind of laughed. I screamed and screamed, Don't leave me, over and over. But he got in the car, drove down the street, into a bright blue light, his favorite color. The second that the car was engulfed, I woke up crying and screaming. This all happened just as my mom got home. She walked in as I was crying and she said, Mark died. And I just kept crying and said, I know, I know. I cried for the whole day, but it did feel better being able to say goodbye in some way. I really do miss him. Rest in peace, Mark. In 2013, following my amicable divorce from my wife, we both relocated to separate residences. We've remained good friends, largely due to our shared parenthood of our daughter. To ensure fair custody, I rented an appealing house located in the city's historic district. Constructed in 1935, it was well-preserved and offered a perfect home for our three-year-old daughter during her fortnightly stays with me. It was during these visits that I began to notice my daughter conversing with an unseen friend. On one occasion, I discovered her in a tiny closet, deep in conversation with a little girl that she referred to as Betty. Considering her age, I assumed this was a product of her vibrant imagination, particularly as I had no idea where she had heard the name Betty. As a single dad to a little girl, I struggled with some aspects of parenting, particularly tasks like hairstyling. While her mother had a knack for it, I was left floundering. One evening, I put her to bed following a bath and remember giving her a quick hairbrush, but that was the extent of my hairstyling capabilities. The following morning when my daughter was just rising, her mom came to pick her up. She discovered our daughter's hair had been transformed into flawless fringe braids. Initially, she praised me for managing such an intricate hairstyle, but I assured her that I had not, and could not, have done it. When we quizzed our daughter about her braids, she said, Betty did them during the night. Aren't they pretty? This incident prompted me to break my lease, and we moved out within the next month. Betty did not come with us.
My name is Luna, and I'm 35 years old, and I'm a hospice nurse. I've been a hospice nurse for the last 10 years. This is a story about a young woman I took care of that I became very close to. The patient in question was 23 years old and was dying of liver cancer. She was given about six months when she was told she was terminal and was put on hospice. I started going to her house twice a week at first, and we really liked each other. As she started slowly going downhill, I started coming more and more until I was there every day. Most of the time, we would just sit and talk. She was a very pretty girl with long black hair and blue eyes. She was very athletic and active before she got cancer, so not being able to do things for herself or get up and around without help was very hard for her. She always wore a minty smelling perfume, which I liked very much. I was with her the day she died, and that was a very hard day for me. I got home pretty late that day, and I made dinner for myself, and sat down in the living room in front of the television. I had been sitting there for about five minutes, when I smelled a minty smell that was just like my patient's perfume. Then I heard a cough, and a female voice call my name. I looked over toward the kitchen, and there was my patient standing beside the kitchen counter. She just looked at me, and she was smiling, and then she waved and disappeared. I think it was just her way of saying she was okay. Sometimes to this day, I still feel like she's watching over me. Sometimes I still smell her perfume, especially if I've had a hard day. Back in 2004 to 2005, I worked in a group home supporting people experiencing intellectual and developmental disabilities. I mostly worked nights, and since the clients in that home were pretty chill, we were always allowed to sleep a few hours before getting our clients up and ready for the day. I usually slept on the couch, with my shoes on the floor next to the couch, and my cell phone, keys, etc., either on the table in my shoe or next to my shoes. One morning I got up and started getting things ready for the day. I had left my phone on the floor in front of the couch. I was a few feet away from the couch, looked over, and I saw a hand reach out from under the couch, grab my cell phone, and start to pull it under the couch. I lunged down and grabbed my phone with one hand. I pulled my phone back toward me but I felt the resistance of whatever had a hold of my phone, pulling it away from me under the couch. After a moment of tug of war, I pulled my phone from the grasp of the hand and it disappeared back under the couch. I was really freaked out, and even to this day I get chills thinking about or relating this experience. The hand was obviously thin to be able to slide in and out from underneath that couch. From the wrist to the tip of the fingers was maybe three to four inches. The skin on this hand was gray and wrinkled, almost shriveled. And the nails, the fingernails were long, pointed, thick and yellow. I have no idea what it was that tried to take my phone or why it wanted it, but it creeps me out to this day. Last night, I woke up at around 2 a.m. I heard this soft yelling and was confused at first as to why somebody was out. Then, as I listened more, I realized there was a pattern to it. I wanted to get up to the window and see who was making that sound, thinking that they may just be a drunk person walking around the parking lot. But there was this overwhelming sense of dread that came over me, like, if I looked outside, I would be drawn to go outside, and if I went outside, I would never come back. This rhythmic whooping, 
continued on for easily 20 minutes and then stopped altogether. It was not an animal. I know this for sure. I have had paranormal experiences before, so maybe I'm easily spooked, but I think I was being lured outside. And even though it sounded human, I didn't get up to look. Now it's the morning after and I can't shake this feeling. Does this sound familiar to anyone else? Some kind of hunting practice for a known humanoid or cryptid? As a note, I live in an area of owls and wild birds and I hear them consistently throughout the week. I know what they sound like. I don't have coyotes or any big cats in my area. I listen to owls outside my window often and I can tell you that this was something different. I don't know how to explain it, but it almost sounded like a human trying to imitate an owl. I only immediately dismissed it as being a wild animal because it was so unlike anything I've ever heard. I would love to know what it could be. So I'm walking to my new job at FedEx and I didn't realize that I had to walk past a cemetery. Mind you, my shift is from 4 a.m. to 9 a.m. I've walked past many cemeteries in my life, so I wasn't too concerned at first. I had a pretty lit up highway on my left and on my right was a large cemetery. No cars, no people, just me. As I kept walking, I start feeling uneasy about the vibes. It wasn't fear, nor was I scared, but it was dreadfulness and sadness overall. And to make matters worse, I didn't realize that it was 3 a.m. at the time. I tried to look straight ahead and not acknowledge the fact that I had a cemetery six feet away from me, just engulfed in complete darkness, but I couldn't. And I can't explain really what I felt, but it was just awful, like a heavy feeling of sadness, but it felt cold. After walking for 20 straight minutes and realizing I had another 15 to go, I decided to just go back home. As I started walking back, I started hearing the grass rustling as if somebody was following me. Honestly, I think my mind was playing tricks but the whole time I felt like I was being watched. I've had a good amount of paranormal encounters in my life, so I'm familiar with this feeling, but I just felt so afraid at that point. I just wanted to share this experience because it kind of had me distressed and I'm just curious to see if anybody else has had a similar experience. Given that this happened in the middle of the woods at night in the Pacific Northwest, as well as the fact that I was a child when it happened, I understand that this could be almost anything. However, even at 23, recalling this moment still brings tears to my eyes and cold chills down my back. I was about 10 years old and it had to have been around 11 p.m. I was at a horse camp in Battleground, Washington and I was the only person awake in my cabin. I heard this sound far off in the distance. It sounded like a horse whinnying, which makes sense. Only it didn't stop. It was one long whinny that kept going. After about six to seven seconds, the pitch grew lower and lower until it turned into this god awful, low guttural scream. It went on for probably about 30 seconds with no pause. I know 30 seconds seems short, but when you're sitting there as a child with nothing between you and it but a screen door, it feels like ages. I never heard that sound again after that, and I know it's a very short story, but even now when I tell this story, it brings tears to my eyes. 
Other than Bigfoot, because I'm sure it's not that, is there any folklore pertaining to the Pacific Northwest that could account for this sound? I don't know of anything that starts out as a horse whinny, never stops, and ends up in a demonic growling scream. I would love to know what it was that I experienced. Maybe I won't be so afraid of it anymore. Has anyone else noticed an increase in doppelganger sightings recently? I just had one yesterday at the library where I work. My coworker and I saw a patron, a regular who we see almost every day, walk in in sweatpants. Neither of us saw him leave. About 15 minutes later, the same man walked in through the one and only entrance and exit, this time wearing something completely different and more formal. My coworker and I stared at each other, completely puzzled. I asked him how he had walked past me so fast that I didn't even notice and why he had changed clothes. He looked at me like I was crazy. He claimed that he had been home all day and this was his first time stopping by. My coworker told him what happened and he was visibly freaked out. It freaked us all out because we looked around for this doppelganger and whoever it was had completely vanished. There is, like I said, only one way in and one way out for patrons. The other doors are either emergency exits, which would have set off the alarms, or the staff entrance, which is a highly restricted area. There was no way he could have left in that short a time without at least one of us noticing. There are no cameras in the building, so there's no way to see how this person could have left. But the only phenomenon that I can attribute this to is the mystery of doppelgangers. I'm very interested in the paranormal, but I'm not a researcher or an investigator. Just a fan, I guess. It seems like there's been an increase in doppelganger sightings. Has anyone else noticed this? I wonder what it could mean. I've lived in rural Massachusetts for 17 years of my life, and I've encountered a lot of wildlife in my time here. One day I was moving my mare up toward another pasture, which was a little ways down from my house, a good 15 minute walk. I tacked her up and we were making our way down the main road. The road is still very rural, dense forest lies on either side, and cars rarely drive on it. It's a perfect main road to horseback ride on. All of a sudden, my mare wouldn't keep going. Annoyed, I dismounted and decided to lead her on foot to the pasture. We were making our way around a corner when I noticed my mare's gaze fixated on something. Less than 15 feet away from us was a large black bear. As we made eye contact, my heart sank into my stomach. I was 16 years old at the time and barely weighed 100 pounds. Staring down something so large is unforgettable, and it was one of the scariest things I've ever experienced. Not only do I have this thing's attention, but I have a whole damn horse with me, and I'm on the ground, not even on the horse. Maybe I didn't act the way I was supposed to, but I'm alive, so I'm not complaining. I slowly started walking backwards with my mare, not wanting to risk anything. Adrenaline does weird things. After I re-rounded the corner and the bear was out of sight, I mounted my mare and made my way back to my house. I actually drove up with my car and managed to get a few blurry pictures of it, but nothing to write home about. I have had a lot of weird ass borderline paranormal encounters in the woods, but nothing beats mother nature's creatures.
Back when I was 18 or 19, I had decided to go to church. It was a church in Cherokee, Alabama, and I went with my once friend, we'll call him Joel, and his family. I had gone in, and Joel and I were directed to the basement with all of the other people who were under 20 to do something. Some kind of class, maybe. I forget what it was. But maybe five to seven minutes in that basement, I get the most blinding headache and excuse myself outside to get some air. I wait for everybody to get done, and we head back to where Joel and his parents lived. The whole ride, this headache is just not going away. I stayed at their house maybe an hour or two while this headache gets worse and worse. I decide to attempt to drive myself home to Crooked Oak. As I'm driving, the headache becomes all but blinding and halfway home in the night on this dark road, I stop at this tiny little backwoods church. The pain is so immense I can't focus on anything at which point I was pretty much wishing to be struck dead just to escape it. I stumbled out of my Jeep and I landed on the first bit of grass I could find and I pretty much passed clear out. After a good stretch of time, the pain left me. I went to drag myself to the Jeep and with my senses returned, I realized that I was laying on someone's old grave. I don't know why it helped, and of course I didn't do it intentionally, but there it is. To this day, I refuse to go near that church. I don't know what's in that basement, but I don't want to encounter it again. I grew up in Florida, in a house that was the original train station for the town we lived in. It was on nine acres of property that our landlord owned, with one acre of that being our neighbor that lived behind but to the left of our house. We shared a shale driveway to the left of our house, but we had a semi-circular driveway made of mulch that went around the back of the house and out to the main road. Suffice it to say that people either drove to our neighbor's house or into our driveway. No one came or went without at least passing our house. One afternoon after school, I was about 11 at the time, my dad met me at the door and said that he wanted to keep an eye out for a yellow car and that he wanted me to sit on the porch until I saw it. That day, I didn't see anything. But for about a week, he went on and on about a yellow car pulling in the shared driveway and revving the engine, and then taking off. That was his best explanation. Then one day he yells for me to run to the bathroom window that faced that driveway. Right there was a car that wasn't so much yellow as it had a soft glow to it, even in the daylight. It was older, but I don't really know cars well enough to tell you what make or model. It just sat there, the engine revving for about 30 seconds, and then it disappeared. My dad wouldn't talk about it after that. He was out in our side yard watching it, and just like me, he didn't see a driver, just a yellow car that kept appearing and disappearing next to our house for about a month and a half total. After that, it never happened again, and to this day, I have no explanation. My friend and I camped on his property in the middle of nowhere. It was in the area of Cane Creek, Kentucky, near Laurel Lake. There was no service, no noise, no anything but you and the woods. We set up our tent under an overhang and I was tasked with gathering the firewood. It was about 5 p.m. or so and while collecting, I got this odd feeling and then I started to hear whispers. They weren't saying anything I could make out. It was just murmurings. At that point, I got this creepy, odd feeling, and I moved closer to our camp to collect the firewood. 
I didn't want to stray very far after that. Night progresses and nothing out of the ordinary happens until we climb into our sleeping bags. I heard footsteps in the leaves and more murmuring. I was getting really freaked out, but I know the best thing to do is to ignore it and sleep. And so I did. The following morning, my friend and I found ourselves awake at 5 a.m. He asked me if I had heard whispering last night. I told him I heard it twice, and we were both just as baffled as the other. We were not the first people to camp in this area. His uncle and his friends attempted to camp there as well, but they couldn't make it through the night either. My dad is a hunter, and he refuses to go down there to hunt anymore as well as another friend I have. His dad says that the air down there is rich in death. I don't know the reason for what happens down there, but I won't be going back. I was in a mountainous recreation area, well after dark, by myself, with no flashlight or camping equipment. I had planned on meditating and fasting all night. At about 10 p.m., I decided that I was hungry, and I started walking down off the ridge that I was on. All of a sudden, there's something big in the darkness. I hear its footsteps in the grass. It sounds very heavy and very large. I got really scared and I started talking to it, pleading it to leave me alone, that I was just going down the hill and that I just wanted to pass and I didn't want any trouble. I started singing some kind of song and I found two rocks and started banging them together. I made it past the place that I last heard it moving, which was only about 14 feet from me. I heard it shift its weight it was still there, but it didn't walk. The comforting part was that it wasn't moving toward me. The scary part was that all my forceful talking and shouting and noise making hadn't scared it at all. I had to stay close to its position because I was on a steep ridge. Something that wasn't afraid of me out there could only have been a bear or something paranormal. The last I checked, bears don't exactly understand human language and don't negotiate with you if you ask them to let you pass. I don't know. I banged the rocks together all the way down the hill so it could hear me moving away. I'm not really sure what this was. And sometimes I think that I'm just fine never knowing. Some friends and I recently visited an abandoned nursing home. We found all kinds of old cool stuff and it was really interesting walking around in there. We took a spirit box with us to see if we could get any interaction with ghosts. We were standing in a dark, empty room, put all our lights out, and turned on the spirit box. We made contact with multiple people. We asked them questions and they responded. I had never talked to ghosts before, so this was really special for me. There were a lot of voices. We kept talking to them until we heard a very loud bang from upstairs. We were startled, and our first reaction was to turn everything off and stay silent for a while. After some time, it was still quiet, so we moved on exploring the rest of the building, until later, again, we heard a very loud bang from upstairs. Again, we kept quiet and waited, but at this point, it began to get really scary. We went upstairs, and we saw this big blood splatter against the wall. At that point, we knew that maybe it was time to go, so we were slowly heading back. We got right in front of a big closed door that we wanted to exit through when we heard a loud noise from the other side of it. We ran as fast as we could to the nearest exit. We actually had to crawl through a hole in the wall to exit the building. As we were outside, we looked up to the floor where we had heard the noise coming from, 
and we saw something that looked like a shadow standing in the opening of a hole in the wall. It was hard to see since it was dark outside. Still, to this day, I'm very curious about what was behind that door, but maybe it's better that we never found out. I was laying down for a nap. I had my two cats snuggled up with me, and my two dogs were outside. All of a sudden, I heard toenails on the hardwood floor, and then sniffing beside the bed. My brain went, okay, one of the dogs is in here. And then I came instantly all the way awake, because my brain went, wait, how did they get in the house? I sat up expecting to see one of the pups sitting beside my bed but there was nothing. I checked all the rooms. No dogs. The doors were all shut. I looked outside and both dogs were still out there. I have no explanation other than perhaps I was dreaming while I was semi-conscious. Or I had a visit from a church grim or black dog. I specifically say church grim because my house is unique. It was originally built attached to a church in the 70s for the pastor's family. My great-grandma bought the house in the 90s from the kids of the original pastor. She attended the church and was extremely devout, so when the pastor passed away, she would go into the church from her house every Sunday and turn the heat on and prepare for service. She lived here until she died. Shortly before she died, the church had a new church built so the old one became abandoned. My grandma inherited the house, and my husband and I bought it from her. So I'm living in my great-grandma's old house that's attached to an old abandoned church. The church still owns the original building, so I don't have access unless I ask. But this is why I think that perhaps I got a visit from a church grim. This past Halloween, my fiancé and I went to explore a real haunted building. I honestly wasn't expecting to have any weird experiences, and I went in being skeptical. We booked ahead of time, and I think it was a group of about 20 people or so that we didn't know. They gave us the history of the place and the rules, and said to go look around. It wasn't a guided tour at all, it was just kind of a do-your-own-thing. The place was super creepy, and I felt like I got weird vibes because of that. However, we went to the second floor, and I was walking past this tiny room that they probably used to store medication. I went to walk into the room, and the mirror in there was broken. I got really lightheaded, and an instant headache when I looked at it. I felt almost like I wasn't myself for about 30 seconds and I walked into another room. As soon as I left, the feelings went away. About five minutes later, my fiance said that she had the same thing happen to her before I even told her what happened to me. We ended up standing in a hallway and I was just recording with my phone. I'd say maybe 15 minutes went by with nothing. And then I felt this electricity from my feet course through my body to my hands and it was like an unseen force went to push my phone away. I wish I could have captured an EVP or some video, but I didn't. Has anyone else checked out a haunted place like this and have any experiences? It's definitely one that's going to be on the books for me for a long time. I've been feeling incredibly shitty lately. Turns out going through a breakup and letting go isn't the easiest thing in the world, and I just haven't been happy. Yesterday I had a shower, and after getting out, 
I was looking at my foggy reflection in the steamed up mirror. It was one of those weird self-reflection moments that you see on TV or something. I drew a smiley face with my finger over my own face. Dramatic? Yeah, probably. But I just felt like doing it. So just now, after having a bath, I was looking at myself in the same mirror while drying my hair. The mirror had since cleared and steamed over again, so my original smiley face had gone. But now, there was another, smaller one, slightly to the right of where mine had been. I know people are rightly going to be skeptical, and I am too. I'm fully aware of paradelia and similar effects, so maybe it's nothing. Maybe it's just parts of the mirror that unsteamed or whatever, and that's how it looked afterward. But it still looks like a drawn face to me. I did think it could have been my dad, but he always complains if I draw on the mirror or car windows because it takes so long to clear or something like that. I don't really know the science of it, but I just know that it annoys him. I'll ask him tomorrow. Part of me is hoping it's my dad, but the other part is hoping that it wasn't, and that this is just my own little message from somebody who's watching. If it wasn't him that did it, I think it's kind of nice. Do spirits pick up on people's feelings? Was it someone watching over me and giving me a smiley face back? I know it doesn't seem like much, but it's an experience that really sat with me, and I just thought I'd share it. When I was 18, I found myself residing with my boyfriend and his family while I was searching for an apartment of my own. In exchange for my lodging, I was entrusted with the care of his three-year-old nephew. A communication barrier existed between us. He was a French speaker and I only knew English, which presented a unique challenge. On one occasion, he was murmuring something in my direction and I had to ask his mother to interpret. Drawing closer, she discerned that he was repeating my little duck over and over. In another incident, he gently pushed open my door, clutching a butter knife in his hand, cast an unnerving smile my way, and then silently disappeared. During one of our TV sessions where we conversed in English, his mother commented, Sometimes, it's as if he comprehends us. In response, he rotated his head toward us, uttered a simple, Yes, and then refocused his attention on the television. Upon my departure, he performed a bizarre act of placing his blanket in the fire and then dragging it out, causing a fire to break out in the living room. What added an even stranger layer to this tale was that my boyfriend's mother was an avid follower of voodoo, to such an extent that his father refused to consume her cooking or wear any clothes that she had laundered, just in case, I guess. He took it upon himself to roam the house each night, carrying a church incense burner to bless each room. I'll start out by saying that I have seen my fair share of strange things in the skies, but one memory will always stand out amongst the others. I've done the math and I believe it was fall of 2005. I was in sixth grade, outside on the phone with my first boyfriend. I'd say it was between six to eight o'clock Eastern time at night. It was dark outside and only our back porch light was on. I was talking up a storm and I was watching my two dogs roam the backyard. Out of nowhere, it was like somebody turned on a blue light above us, the dogs and I. It was a bright, beautiful electric blue. I immediately looked up and saw what I can best describe as the shape of an eye, but perfectly symmetrical in the same blue color. It was lined with an almost holographic looking light a constantly changing rainbow of colors. 
I stared for maybe two seconds before it closed up, leaving only the colorful outline. It immediately shot to the left like a shooting star and disappeared. In shock, I told my boyfriend I would call him back and I immediately ran to my parents who were folding clothes in the bedroom. I shouted at them, I just saw aliens. They laughed at first and told me to stop joking, but my father knows my eyes. He saw my panic and quickly changed the subject. I've never forgotten this moment. I can still see it so clearly, even to this day. What did I see? Why did I see it? Can anyone help? This happened like eight minutes ago, and I'm pretty confused, so I decided to come and tell my story. Maybe some of you know what's going on. I saw a car pull up in the parking lot. I'm working security. It parked beside my truck, and it was the only car there. At first I couldn't tell if it was a cop, because it had no lights on the top, and the cameras don't show enough detail to see the writing. It was also an unusual model, definitely not current, but not super old either. Anyway, I went outside to confront the car, because as far as I knew, they were up to no good, and I didn't like them being beside my truck. I go outside and I start walking toward them, but immediately the car drives to the other side of the parking lot and around the building. There's no exit that way. I see that it says police on the door. So I go back in to see what they're doing before proceeding. And the car is nowhere to be found. The cameras record everything when movement is detected. So I looked back at that time slot, but the car isn't on the feet at all. I appear in the footage walking out of the building. There's no way that the cameras wouldn't detect a car driving in a huge circle around the lot. And I didn't imagine it. I'm very well rested, very alert, as I work third shift every night, and I slept nine hours before coming in. I'm just very confused about what I saw, and why the cameras couldn't. outside of Melbourne, Australia. This is the crazy experience that I just had recently. I was outside on my deck having a smoke and I looked up at the sky. Suddenly, two stars appeared directly on top of each other, evenly spaced. Then a third star appeared directly under the second star, again evenly spaced. Another star appeared blinking and moving toward the first star then went down toward the second, then down to the third, and then away. It was moving very slowly, and each star was blinking in a pattern. I called my partner outside to verify what I saw, and he confirmed that I wasn't crazy, and witnessed the moving stars slowly move in patterns that normal craft or satellites couldn't move in. It was going up and down and away and then back, at a consistent slow speed. Something clearly had control over it. It was remarkable. We checked again a little bit later and all three stars were gone. I chatted to my housemate about it. Sadly, he was in his room at the time and didn't witness it. He said that my friend and her partner that live about 15 minutes away witnessed the exact same thing months ago. I called my friend and she confirmed that they saw the exact same thing, and then her partner confirmed it as well. They even confirmed the direction they had seen it in from local landmarks and buildings, which completely matched the direction that we had seen it in. So four people have witnessed something similar in a space of like three months in our small town. Super weird.
About three years ago, I was on a family vacation to eastern Washington, and a central aspect of our trip was visiting Lake Paragon State Park. It's an extremely rural area with a tiny western town about a mile away, and that's about it for miles. Anyway, we had just arrived for our 10-day stay in the afternoon, and it was now around 11 p.m. My mom and I left our hotel to go down to the park, as she was really into photography and the moon was full. If you're not familiar, eastern Washington as a whole is pretty desolate, so the night sky is generally incredible with very little light pollution. There were no clouds to be seen, and we were a ways down a dirt back road over the park, above the campground, with no real roads anywhere in sight. We got out of the car and took some pictures, with nothing more unusual than the eerie silence. About 15 minutes into our visit, we're both facing away from the moon, looking at the rolling hills, and we noticed this odd concentration of light on one hillside, about a quarter mile away. Before either one of us could point it out to the other, the mass of light shining on this hill rolled away into nowhere. It took two seconds and was entirely gone. The whole hillside was brightly lit up, and then nothing. We freaked out and got out of there as fast as humanly possible. We both saw it. There were no other people, no moving clouds, and no roads from which headlights could shine. We still have no explanation for what we witnessed. A year ago, while living in New Jersey, I currently live in Michigan, I came across a strange news story about a young hiker discovered dead in a mountainous forest. It initially seemed a routine incident, but the circumstances soon proved to be strange. The report indicated that the mountain was undergoing a period of heavy rainfall during that time. The downpour was relentless, sometimes exceeding half an inch per hour and it continued for several days before and during the search for the man. An autopsy conducted by a medical examiner revealed intriguing findings. Aside from a few scratches on his knees, the man displayed no visible injuries or signs of infection. However, the condition of his lungs and airways was alarming. The autopsy report emphasized the remarkable presence of pus in his tracheal bronchial tree. The man was only 28 years old. What's even stranger is that the coroner suggested the rainfall might have contributed to his condition. By the time the hiker was found, he had been dead for three days, and there was no record of him issuing any distress calls. It also hinted that hypothermia was not the cause of death. After this report, there were no subsequent updates about the man's case. It was a startling silence for such an unusual incident. A man found lifeless on a mountain, his lungs and airways filled with an abnormal amount of fluid. Sometimes, I still wonder about what really happened to him. So, I decided to post this after the sixth person who has come into my basement has said that they feel off, overwhelmed, and like they're being watched. I usually bring them down to play billiards, and I have my old PS2 and Xbox 360 down there as well. The basement is finished, painted, and carpeted, and there's an office down there too. They always leave saying that they all felt the same things and that they're so put off by it that they never want to go into my basement again. Yesterday, one of my friends left his mask in my basement, went back down to get it by himself, and said that he felt like his heart was beating out of his chest. I also want to note that when we first moved in, for the first month or so, 
we would find an unreasonable amount of dead centipedes across the basement floor, but only in the room with the billiards table. The office room never had a single centipede in it. All of a sudden, the centipedes just stopped, never saw one again. It's been two years. I felt the same weirdness, but I always ignored it. I'm usually afraid of basements because I generally don't like being underground, so it wasn't unusual to me. But then everyone else started talking about it. I've also noticed that my house has become more active, as in lights turning on and off when nobody's home, doors opening and closing for no reason, doorknobs jiggling aggressively, things moving to very peculiar places. I really don't know what to do with this. After the death of their grandfather, Redditor Omastorm had an encounter that startled and comforted them. This is the story. A few years ago, my grandpa had passed away. He wasn't a very big believer in ghosts or anything regarding the paranormal, until he was in his older years. Well, I ended up inheriting his 86 T-Bird. Lots of history with that car between myself and my grandpa. Anyway, a few months after he passed away, I'm driving the car to work, listening to music, and just processing the fact that he was truly gone. The car is all I have left. Or so I thought. I drive toward one of my work sites and out of nowhere, I get a blast of the cologne he always wore. It was his favorite cologne to use whenever he was going out anywhere. I pull up to my work site and park the car. I can smell the cologne so strongly in the passenger seat and I'm just staring at it like there's no cologne in here, but why does it smell like grandpa's? It took me a solid two minutes to figure out that his spirit was in the car with me. His spirit had taken a ride with me to work that day. The cologne scent didn't dissipate one bit. It was honestly reassuring to me that he was still there in a way. So yeah, interesting and odd encounter for me because of the fact that when he was alive, he wasn't really a strong believer in the afterlife. Well, I guess he proved himself wrong because he still hangs around me whenever something's wrong. To start off, I'm not really a believer in the paranormal. I mean, sure, creepy things do happen, but never to the point of me thinking that it was definitely a ghost or whatever. But one night, a few days ago, it was nearly midnight and I was on my bed, thirsty during a heat wave. So I get up, ready to get a Gatorade, and I open my door. I see this black and brown shadow figure. It was crouching, was six to seven feet tall, and zoomed across my living room into my dining room. To top things off, my cat saw it, definitely, because the cat reacted. So I go get my Gatorade, cause ain't no demon gonna stop me from quenching my thirst, and I get back to my room and think about it. It couldn't have been my door, it opens inward, and it couldn't have been one of my cats. Here's the worst part. My stepdad lived in a house with some paranormal stuff going on. I thought maybe it followed him. Maybe he brought some kind of demon into the house. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm haunted. I really don't know. But another experience was at my dad's house. I was in my room at the end of the hall, and I heard the slider in the kitchen open. Keep in mind it's at night, and everyone is in their respective rooms. So, being the guy I am, I take out a pocket knife and investigate. As soon as I open my bedroom door, the bathroom door next to my room slams shut. Now, I don't know if this could be connected to the first story, but it was really, really creepy nonetheless. I have no idea what's going on, but that's my story.
The experience that I'm relaying here happened to one of my best friends who stays with his grandmother who's in her mid eighties. One day, her daughter picked her up and they went shopping together. My friend Rob went into his bedroom to watch TV right after they left. About a half an hour later, he heard some noise coming from the kitchen. So he poked his head out the door to see what it was. He saw his grandmother in the kitchen, facing away from him, digging furiously through her junk drawer, obviously searching for something. He just shrugged and went back into his room. Another hour and a half passes and he comes out into the living room. That's when he see his aunt's van pull up to the house and his grandmother and aunt come in carrying all of her parcels. He then became uneasy and asked her if she found what she was looking for in the kitchen. She looked at him like he was nuts and said that she had been gone for hours and that she had never been looking in the kitchen drawer that day. He then explained that he had seen her and that whoever it was had on the exact same clothes and the same hair. He started laughing, thinking that she was just trolling him but his aunt looked very concerned and verified that they had not returned after their initial departure. Rob began to freak out, and when he told me what happened later that day, he was glad that he didn't see its face, whatever it was. I believe him, because he's never told a story even remotely close to this one, and he seemed really unsettled by the whole incident. Honestly, I would be too. I've had a couple of ghost encounters that really messed me up, but this one in particular was the worst. My mom was dating this guy who wasn't like a super country guy, but not like a normal country guy either. He also had a son who I still stay in close contact with to this day. Basically almost every Sunday, we would go out to my stepdad's mom's house. She lived in the middle of the woods, but not too secluded like there were other houses in the area. But directly across the dirt road, there was this abandoned house that pretty much looked exactly what you would expect an abandoned house to look like. My stepbrother and I would go in there every once in a while just for fun, and we would see some pretty weird stuff, like a random chair in the middle of a room, a cooler full of dead roses. But one day, we were headed in there like usual, but I took one step in and I wanted to throw up. My stepbrother kept going and was telling me it was fine and to just come in, but I was not going in there. A couple of minutes of talking go by and all of a sudden my brother's face turns pale as hell. He drops his water bottle and he runs out without saying a word. I follow him, asking him to slow down and he says that we're never going back in there again. When I asked why, he said that he heard a voice whisper in his ear and tell him to run. We never told our parents until like two years later. At the time, we were 12. And true to his word, we never went back in there again. At around 11 years old, I was in my room, sleeping on the top bunk. My sister was asleep on the bottom bunk. Across from my bed was my dresser with a large mirror. If you're laying and you look to the left, the mirror is there. I remember waking up in the middle of the night and looking at the mirror, and I saw what looked like myself sitting on the bottom bunk, staring at me through the mirror with a grin except she looked like she was sitting backwards so that she had to turn her head to look toward the mirror, if that makes sense. I was really confused and really creeped out. I stared at it for a while, thinking that maybe it was my sister. I even called out her name, but it wasn't. I strained my eyes to try and see better in the dim lighting, but I got too freaked out, so I turned around and tried to go back to sleep. 
The next morning, I find a handprint on the mirror. I was beyond spooked at this point. That house always had weird activity too. Bottles in the bathroom randomly crashing down. Once I heard a man shout, hey, when I was alone and leaving for school. Very strange house. I know some might say that this was a dream, and maybe it was, but I know that I was wide awake. It felt so real. I remember it vividly. I remember trying to get back to sleep afterward. I'll never forget, though, the feeling of staring at myself, staring back at me, so menacingly. For the first time in my life, I had a really lucid dream. At least I hope that's what it was. I woke up at 2.30 in the morning, my time, PST. At my back door, it's a security door, so like a metal screen door, I saw something and I thought it was my wife. I asked her why she was out there and she said that she had accidentally locked herself out. I had been out there not five minutes before, and I knew that I didn't lock the door. She was wearing her normal bedtime apparel, but her hair wasn't the right color, and her voice wasn't quite right. I asked again what she was doing, and she just says, just let me in. I get closer to the door, but I can't see her face. I say again, why are you out there? She ignores me again and says, just let me in. I moved to open the door and I noticed that she changed to an inhumanly small frame, which was all black and had no features. I slammed the wood door and bolted to find my wife asleep in the bed where I had left her. Now, if I'm honest, I don't even believe I was dreaming, but my mind cannot comprehend that as being real. Nothing anywhere near that level of paranormal has ever happened to me before. And whether or not it was a dream, it was definitely freaky. And I'm still trying to figure it out. These experiences happened two to three years ago. I was around 13 to 14 at the time. The first experience occurred to me and my younger sister. It was around nine o'clock at night, not too late, but we were folding clothes and I heard a faint knock. I asked my sister if she had heard the knock, but she said no. I just shook it off because I thought it might've been a relative or something. But about 10 minutes later, we hear the knock again, and this time my sister heard it too. This time it was way louder. I mean, you might think that that's not scary or creepy, but the knock came from our window, and the window is only accessible to someone in the home, because the window is in our backyard and no outsider has access to the backyard. We immediately bolted out of the room because we were frightened. The next experience happened only to me. It was also around 9 p.m. at night, and I had gone into the kitchen for a cup of water. While I was pouring water, I heard a loud knock on the living room window. I got so scared that I yelled for my mom, who was in the other room at the time. She checked outside, but all she found was a rock. Everyone who lived in the house at the time said that someone had gotten a rock and thrown it at the window as a joke, but I disagreed. I disagreed because the rock that my mom found was only in our front yard, and our front yard gate was closed at the time. You need a key to be able to open it. I don't know though. What do you guys think? Was it a ghost or a person?
This is not necessarily super creepy, but creepy enough in a sense that it gave me some peace. And I think maybe my grandma some peace too. It was around Christmas time. I was staying with my then boyfriend and I was staying over at his house, sleeping down in the basement. That night, I had a really strange dream. I was in a house and there was a party going on. When I was there, an older man approached me. He knew my name and I felt like I knew him. But I also knew that I had never met him in person and I couldn't place him. He was really sweet, very nice, and we just kind of stared at each other. It was like we were having a conversation, but we weren't. It was kind of strange. I felt so comfortable with him as a person does with a close family member. Finally, he said, Hey, tell your Nana I say hi, and I love her. And I was like, Oh, okay, sure. And then I woke up. I told my grandma about it the next day and gave her some information on what the guy looked like. She started crying on the phone, saying, you just saw my dad. I guess he had died a few years before I was born and I'm actually named after him partially. My middle name is Joe. Turns out his birthday was on December 31st. I believe he would have been 90 something and the dream that I had was also on December 31st. So on the day before Halloween 2015, a few of my friends and I all got together to hang out. We stayed out fairly late, until sundown, when we were usually supposed to go back to our houses. But something felt off. We all felt this way. So as a group, we decided to keep doing our thing and keep an eye out for anything suspicious until a bright light switched on and startled all of us. When we looked up, we saw two identical twin boys sitting at the windowsill of the main window of our home. We lived in a townhome neighborhood where the bottom window was the kitchen window, and we were immediately unsettled. It was at least nine o'clock, and these boys seemed very young, like they should have been in bed way before then. Most of my friends freaked out and went back home, but another girl and I stayed. At least 10 minutes went by, and they were just blankly looking out of the window, not at anyone or anything in particular. What made this creepy though was the fact that no other lights were on in the house, despite the rest of the houses still being lit up for the most part. No cars were parked in front of their house either, and it seemed like the doormat that was there before we noticed them was gone. Not to mention, we knew the people who lived inside, a couple who didn't have any kids or younger nieces or nephews or anything, making the whole situation that much weirder. Who knows who those boys were or how they'd gotten there, but the strange expressions on their faces and the setting sure made them creepy. This took place in Poland, probably in January. It happened about six months ago. I just had a chat with my friend and I recalled the memory. During winter, I used to go on these short hikes to my local forest. Most of the time, nothing out of the ordinary happened. The most unusual thing was seeing a wolf pack once and that's it. But this event happened at about 7.30 or 8 o'clock in the morning. The weather was quite cold about negative 10 degrees Celsius, and snow was lightly falling. There were no people out that day. One hour into the woods, I heard it. This weird music, which seemed to come from all directions at once, and it kept getting louder. It sounded like muffled piano, and something resembling jingles could be heard too. It went on for a solid minute, 
and then slowly faded away. I was so weirded out that I didn't even take my phone out at first, but when I finally did, I realized that my phone had turned off, probably because of the temperature. After the music stopped, I decided to finish my hike anyway, as I found it more in the category of weird than frightening. The other strange thing though is that when I go out hiking, I always see deer, wild boars, hares, and other animals. There was not a single living being to be seen after I saw the music. What could it have been? This happened three to four years ago, and I've been thinking about it recently. It was late one night, around 11.30 p.m., and I was driving home from my job at Sonic. I was taking US Route 64 home, which is a fairly desolate stretch of road with houses and farmland on either side. I was in my 99 Ford Explorer, and I was just driving along around 65 to 70 miles per hour with the radio on low volume. As I'm driving, through the sunroof comes a bright green ray of light that envelops the interior of my vehicle. This lasts for about two to three seconds. Then it disappears without a trace. After that happened, I just sped up and got home as quickly as possible. I was only about five minutes away. That's really about all there was to it, but I was really freaked out. I have pondered and pondered, but I have no clue what that could have been. I wasn't tired because I woke up at around five or six that day and I have no history of any illnesses that could have caused this. I wasn't on any medications. I've told a few people and I don't think that they believe I'm lying. I've never been the kind to lie about that kind of thing, but no one can give me a solid answer either. Some have said maybe it was a laser, but I don't think there's any way a laser could completely cover my vehicle in green light like that. There was a farm that I was passing by, but it wasn't lit and there were no street lights. I have no idea what it was that I encountered. In the last two weeks or so, sometimes at night, I will hear banging and stomping from the flat below ours. There's one apartment per floor, only one apartment below me. This usually happens around 1 a.m., when normally the whole building is silent. It's interesting because no one lives in that apartment. The elderly woman who occupied it since before we moved in sadly passed away very suddenly last month. She actually slipped on one of the steps in front of the building when it was icy outside and died right in front of our place. I wrote off the noises as my imagination the first few times, since I am very much a believer of the paranormal, so I am known to get overly excited about these things. That was until my boyfriend and I heard the noises this morning. He confirmed that they were real and were coming from directly below us. As a huge non-believer, he said it's likely a window was left open in the apartment below and that the wind is causing it to open and shut. He didn't sound very confident though, because you could clearly hear the sounds moving around the house, not just from the wall where the window would be. Our apartments all have glass on the front doors, so you can easily see movement inside. I went down to have a look if the landlord was in there for some reason and saw no sign of life whatsoever. To make it weirder, you can see my building clearly from the hill just behind. And when I walked up there earlier, it looked like the windows in the apartment below us were fully closed. This happened to me when I was in high school, living with my parents. 
One night, I went out with friends. I drank a couple of beers and I went back home. I was just a little tipsy, not drunk, and I decided to take a shower before going to bed. It was about one to two in the morning. The shower cabin that we had wasn't fixed to the floor or the walls. It was like a capsule, but it was very heavy and hard to move. I entered the shower and after a few minutes, the cabin started swinging left to right and it was very loud. I was standing trying not to move and it stopped. But as soon as I continued to shower again, it started swinging again. I stepped outside and there was my dad banging on the bathroom door, asking what I was doing because the noise woke him up. I just got dressed and went to bed. The next morning, my dad asked me again what that noise was and I tried to explain what happened. He said that I was just drunk and fell in the shower, so I moved the cabin. But that did not happen. I know that it didn't happen. I wasn't drunk. I had had maybe two beers and I was standing the whole time. I had never fallen. It moved by itself, something that should have been impossible. I went to the bathroom and tried very hard to move or swing the cabin back and forth, but it was impossible. I still have no idea what happened that night. When I was a young child, about 10 or 11, I moved into a small country town. I've been there before and my parents grew up there. Everyone who lives there knows that the whole town is haunted, from the school and even the church hall to everything else. And once it goes dark, most people who live there go inside because you can see spirits walking in dark places and that's pretty much the extent of it. But the house that I lived in had a spirit who likes to mimic voices, specifically of your loved ones, and even likes to look like them. It would only target me and my older sisters, and only when we were home alone. I would wake up with bruises and scratches, same as my sister. One time I was home alone and heard my older sister call out for me from our room. I got up and saw her walk into our room just slightly, but I could tell it was her. I called her name, but she didn't answer, so I followed her in. I entered our room and saw that it was empty. I thought that she was messing with me, but she's pretty tall, so there wasn't really anywhere she could hide. Then suddenly I heard the front door open. I went and saw my older sister with the rest of my family coming home. She hadn't been there. This wasn't the first time that something like this happened, and it certainly wasn't the last. Fortunately, I moved out of there about two years ago, and I've never woken up with a random bruise or scratch ever again. This happened a couple of weeks after my dad passed. It was the week that I had gotten a new couch. I fell asleep on it while watching TV. I awoke to the telephone ringing in the middle of the night. I got up and walked around my coffee table, picked up the phone and said, hello? It was my father. He sounded as chipper as ever. He said, hello, my dear. I told him that he was dead. He said, oh no dear, I'm just here swimming with the dolphins. After hearing him say that, I vaguely remembered walking on a beach and talking with him, a memory I'd nearly forgotten. The next day, I received a phone call from some friends who were down in Mexico. I had given them some of his ashes and told them to disperse them somewhere they thought he would like. As she was talking, I abruptly interrupted her to tell her my story. We hadn't spoken about the ashes at all in this conversation. She went silent for a full minute and finally said, 
you are never going to believe this. She and her husband had chartered a boat the day previous. They had asked the captain to stop so that they could release their friend who had passed. The captain obliged. Not a minute after they released my father, the dolphins showed up and started to play in the water. They stayed and watched them for an hour. So yeah, my dad literally was swimming with the dolphins. This happened when I was 14 and I'm 21 now. I lived with my parents in a small three bedroom townhouse. I remember not being able to sleep the night we moved in, basically laying there staring at the ceiling for ages. My closet and wardrobe were made of a sliding glass mirror which faced to the side of my bed. Being unable to sleep, I rolled over and stared at the mirror and then my heart sank, and I froze. In the reflection of the mirror, I saw a hooded figure behind me, walking toward me. It looked to be about six feet tall, and basically resembled the stereotypical Grim Reaper type of character. I freaked out and turned around, but there was nothing there. I ran out of the room, crying to my parents. I knew that they wouldn't believe me, so I just said that I had a bad dream but I know for a fact that I was not asleep at all. I've had sleep paralysis many times, and this wasn't that either, so I know it was real. A couple of years later, I told my dad about what happened. He told me that when my brother-in-law's uncle came to visit, he's considered a man of healing in Papua New Guinea, he said he felt an odd presence and then blessed the home. This happened after my encounter, after hearing that, it convinced me that it definitely was an entity and it wasn't my imagination. Since then, I've had no further experiences. Several years back, when my niece was a four-year-old toddler, now she's eight, she uttered something quite peculiar. My sister and her husband had just brought home an irresistibly charming puppy. The pup was a bit high-spirited, but absolutely delightful. As we were all engaging with the little canine one day, I was sharing the couch with my sister, who was expecting her third child, a fact I had dreamt about in a prophetic vision, a story for another time. Suddenly, my niece revealed to us that she had owned a dog in the past. This caught my sister and me off guard. Curious, I asked her, Really? Was your dog similar to Bobby? She answered, No, my previous dog was larger and much more well-behaved. Then came the strangest part. My grandson got the dog for me as a companion after my husband passed away. Puzzled, my sister inquired further into what she meant. My husband passed away and my grandson gifted me a dog, she repeated, her focus unwavering from the dog's belly she was gently rubbing. She relayed this as if it were an undeniable fact, with no names given. The same evening, she mentioned there was a ghost named George, upstairs, waiting for her to accompany him. However, she declared that she wasn't ready to ascend the staircase with him just yet. The entire episode was deeply uncanny. When I was a kid, I lived in Alabama way out in the country. My best friend at the time lived about a mile away, and my older brother and I would go over there daily during the summer. Near his property is a dead forest. 
All the trees are there, but they never have any leaves. It's pretty darn creepy to begin with. Sometimes we played in there, but we never went very far. One day, my brother and my friend, let's call him Sam, wandered off while I was messing with a turtle, and they disappeared. Once I was done playing with the turtle, not hurting it or anything, I went around the property looking for them, until I thought I saw one of them head into the woods. By this time, it was late afternoon and getting darker. I ran to the woods, but I couldn't see them. Then I heard what sounded like them talking, deeper in. I followed the voices, and they kept seeming farther and farther away, as though I should have been getting closer. And then, they stopped. And suddenly, I felt really scared. At that moment, I realized that the sun had already set, and it was starting to get very dark. So I ran all the way back to Sam's house. My older brother and Sam were playing Nintendo in his room and thought that I was still in the backyard playing with the turtle. I never did figure out what I was chasing in those creepy woods, but I'm kind of glad that I never did. Back in May of 2012, my family and I went to Ireland. We were staying in a cottage in a rural area that was far away from any major city or town. Two days before we were leaving, my cousin and I and her two-year-old daughter, Maisie, were outside in the garden. Maisie had one of those interactive books for young kids that play nursery rhymes, row your boat, hickory dickory, things like that, whenever you pressed a certain button. She was messing around, pressing multiple buttons, when she pressed a green one that was supposed to play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but it didn't. Instead, the book played a song that neither I nor her mother recognized. Even weirder, however, was the fact that Maisie began to sing one line toward the end of the song, which I remember being something like, I will reach the golden city to join the angel band. Her mother, of course, was shocked, as she was only two years old and was just beginning to talk. These words were extremely advanced for her vocabulary, even if she had only learned from memory. When I got home, I searched the lyrics Maisie had sung, and it turned out to be what I had speculated, a hymn, specifically one called The Pilgrim's Journey. None of our family was religious, and neither of us understood where Maisie had learnt the hymn, and even less why the book had played it in the first place. We tried pressing the green button again and again, but it never played the hymn again, just Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, as it was supposed to. My nephew, who was two and a half at the time, sister and her husband used to live in my house. One day, my nephew was looking out the window and sharing his juice with the window. His mom asked him what he was doing and he said something about sharing his juice with the man. My sister assumed he was sharing with his reflection and didn't know the word for boy, so she brushed it off. He then began to show off his dino slippers. No big deal. Next day, he's back at it, except this time he says the man had his horses and was scary. She looked out the window, nothing, and no horse-related items in the room at the time. As she's looking, my nephew runs over and begins to cry, saying the man was scary. His dad came home later and shot the bad guy away with a Nerf gun, and he never appeared again. This is really weird because both my sister and I, the only two of us who have ever slept in the front end of the house where this happened, used to see this scary looking man out of the other window wearing a cowboy hat. My sister even found a dog tag with info on it about a man. 
We looked up the information, though, and found nothing of use. I don't remember anything written on the tag. We live in a fairly big new neighborhood, and there were no local deaths. It was really, really odd. For context, I've been doing gymnastics for nine years, and we had some weird shit happen at our old gym. We moved to a new facility in December of 2017, but the creepy stuff didn't end there. Here is one of those stories. This didn't happen to me, but it happened to two of my coaches, who I believe and trust with my life, literally. They wouldn't lie about these things. Gabby and Maya are the only two people who stay in the gym after hours on our practice nights. This particular night was a Thursday. Before this, we had seen handprints all over the mirrors and things like that. The gym we moved into post-handprints was a high school gymnasium, and to exit there are two sets of glass doors with a shoe mat in the space between. They walk a few feet down the hallways of the old school to leave. Maya was in the front, and Gabby was behind her. Maya saw a man reflected in the glass. If you think, how could she see that? It's pitch black outside by the time they leave, so reflections really show up in the glass. She says he was white and tall, with shaggy dark hair down to his ears. He starts to run toward them. Maya thought maybe he wanted to ask them a question, so she turned around. Gabby ran into her, since Maya is taller and she couldn't see the reflection, but she heard footsteps coming quickly close to them. There was no one there, though. The man was gone, but both of them knew that there had definitely been someone there. This wasn't anything mind-blowing, but it happened to me earlier today, and it made me so confused. I live in an apartment building, and the ground level is like a communal public space. I was taking the lift down from my apartment level to this ground level to exit the place in the morning. The lift doors have transparent panels, so you can look out of the lift. And because of how lifts usually slow down when they're reaching the destination floor, and the doors sometimes take a few seconds to open. I had a good 10 seconds to look at what was happening at the public space in the ground floor. From what I saw, there were three men mopping the floor, and one old lady, who I know is my neighbor, was walking across the space in front of these three men. But when I was in the lift, I noticed that all four of them were frozen. But it was weird because they weren't just standing in casual positions. The men looked like they had just frozen as they were mopping, and the old lady was literally mid-stride. I spent a good three or four seconds wondering what was going on as I waited for the lift doors to open. But the moment the lift doors opened and I stepped out, everyone started moving. The men went back to mopping the floor, and the lady continued walking again. It was so odd, though, because it literally looked as though somebody had pressed play on them when I stepped out of the lift. It was so weird to me. I have no idea what happened. It was Christmas Eve of 2014 at about 8 o'clock p.m. I was driving to my boss's house to drop off a set of keys when an orange orb flew over my car. I immediately pulled over to the side and got out of the car and looked up to see a dozen orange orbs the size of cantaloupes. They were five to ten feet above me. They seemed to have heartbeats and would control their brightness, pulsing. I was trying to see if they were solid, but they weren't, which was odd because they were definitely intelligent. They were completely silent, 
and seemed to have their own personalities. Some stood still, while others whizzed by playfully. When I would stare at one, it would blink, I guess to let me know that it saw me. I wasn't scared. I was actually euphoric and very excited to be a witness to this. They seemed friendly to me. I watched them for about three to five minutes until they slowly flew away and each one disappeared. I was amazed and I even stopped at a church that was close by to ask if anybody had seen these things. They said no. To this day, it was one of the most bizarre and profound experiences of my life. Also, the next day, my eyes were burning red and sore. I later found out that there were many other sightings all over the US on the same night. My cousin, who is 14 years younger than me, was playing in his bedroom at about age two, maybe three. Suddenly, he starts screaming and bolts out of the room into my arms. I asked him what had happened, expecting him to say that he got hurt or something. He's sobbing, saying, scary guy, scary guy. It was the middle of the day, bright and sunny, and his room was on the second floor. So I just thought something startled him and I was going to go show him that everything was okay. I tried coaxing him back to the bedroom, but he wasn't having it. I went and checked the room for myself and there was nothing spooky, no one there. I finally convinced him to come back into the room, but he insisted on being in my arms when he did. When we got to the room, I said, see? Nothing to worry about. But he pointed to his closet and said, Scary guy, over there. So I walked over to the closet and looked. Nothing. So I told him, there's nothing here. He turns around and looks at the ceiling of the closet. And that's when he starts shrieking and climbing up my body, trying to get out of my arms and away from the closet. I bolted out of that room with him and he calmed down. I never did figure out what he saw, but that room always freaked me out from then on until the day that they finally moved. This has been several years back. I had to have been maybe 16 or 17 at the time. It was a Thursday and I was in the pastor's office working on a lesson for one of the classes. The church was a decent size. When you first walk into the foyer, you have stairs up to your right that go down into the basement and stairs in front that bring you to the sanctuary. From the sanctuary, you have a door on the right that leads to a ramp, which brings you to a hallway that hallway has a ramp that goes into the basement and library. On past the ramp is the nursery, a classroom, and the office on the right. Then on the left is another hallway that leads to the bathrooms, classrooms, and the gym. I'm in the office and I hear a thud coming from the sanctuary. Confused, I look out the window and see no other cars than mine. I figured maybe the pastor walked over to grab something or check on something. I called him and asked him if he was in the church. He explained that he and his wife were in one of the Carolinas. I asked about the deacons, and most were home or out of state. Plus, most will ring the doorbell to warn me that they're there. With the phone call confirming that I should be alone, I go out to check the noise. I get to the ramp that goes to the sanctuary, and I hear footsteps running down the ramp toward me. I couldn't see what it was. I could only hear it. I bailed and I shut myself in the office until I felt safe again.
One night shift, I was dispatched to the VA clinic. As it turned out, a juvenile was in a psychiatric appointment for hearing voices. The kid reportedly heard a pair of hatchets tell him to cut people. So, of course, the mom brought him to a doctor. During the appointment, the mother grabbed the hatchets from a bag to show the psychiatrist. As soon as she put them in view, the kid grabbed them and ran out of the building and directly into the cemetery across the street. Thankfully, I was not asked to run alongside K-9 to track this kid, but they did find him without any major incidents. I was, however, tasked with bringing the kid to the centers for evaluation, and while he was in the back of my patrol car, we distracted him with questions while another officer very subtly placed the hatchets in my trunk. It was quiet for a while on the way, and all of a sudden the kid said, Sir, you have my hatchets in the trunk, don't you? I can feel them. I didn't verbally respond, but I simply laughed a little. I have never been so freaked out by anything to this day. The centers obviously wouldn't take the hatchets. My sergeant told me not to place them into evidence, and I tried to return them to the mother and she refused to take them. I think we ultimately threw them out, but I don't really know. I just hope they never reunite with that kid ever again. I had to do my practice in my school as a librarian for three months. Every morning, I used to sweep and mop the library floor and then start to arrange the books on the shelves. Then I would key in all of the new book entries on the computer. I had the habit of bringing a bottle of holy water with me and I would place it on the table where I sit. Since it was the major exam month, the library would be lonely as the students and the teachers would be going back from school to their houses after one paper that day. Only some students and teachers would come to the library to study and borrow books. Most of the time, though, I would be alone in the library, so I would play some music as I arranged the books on the shelves. One day, as I was taking the log books out from the drawer, I accidentally spilled some holy water on the floor. To my shock, that area started to smoke a little. Although it was hard to see with the naked eye, I sensed that something was amiss in the library that day. As soon as I got up, in shock, the media room doorknob behind me started to twist and turn frantically. I stood in my place and looked over the counter to check if someone was there. I saw a shadow at the bottom of the door. I rushed out of the library and walked over to the media room which was just next door to the library, and turned the doorknob slowly. It was locked. No one could have been in there. So whose shadow did I see? Ever since I was 13, in 2008, I have developed an interest in aliens and UFOs. I have grown enough of an interest to actually create a scrapbook of pictures of UFOs, declassified government documents, newspaper clippings, and things like that. All of these things were available from Google. I even recorded my own UFO sightings here and there, but I eventually threw them out because I was worried that I was sticking my nose where it didn't belong. In any case, this is one of my UFO experiences. It was somewhere between 2009 and 2011. I was around 14 to 16. It was around 8 or 9 p.m., and I was looking into the sky to see if I might get lucky and find a UFO. I noticed a large triangular-shaped silhouette facing west into my backyard. It was huge, and it had a red light at the center. Parts of the craft warped into a boomerang shape. One part was invisible at times, and the other part wasn't. It was as if it had some invisible shield that was on and then off. 
it was able to change its shape from a boomerang and then into a triangle and then just disappear. In the past, I've had other UFO experiences, but this one was the most convincing one of my whole life. Does anyone else have any UFO experiences? If you do, I'd love to hear them. I was up north at my uncle's cabin when I saw something really strange. I'm laying in bed at night and it was like one o'clock in the morning, so it was pretty dark outside. We're surrounded by trees everywhere. I'm laying on the bed upstairs and I'm staring outside at the windows which are downstairs because I can see it from where I'm at. The windows are very large. From the far left window, I see this massive bright white orb floating above the deck or porch. It moves back and forth between the one window and the other. I can't fully remember if I saw it pass over or behind one of the blind spots between the windows, but it just kept going back and forth multiple times with some speed. I gaze at the window and watch the orb travel from one side of the window to the other side multiple times. The size of the orb, from what I can remember, would be about the size of a large watermelon. I know that it was not the moon. Even when the porch is wet, the light of the moon doesn't really reflect. It was just my dad, my grandpa, and I there. There's also one other important thing. This place is where my uncle David's ashes are buried. Not my uncle the owner, but my mom's other brother. He's not buried near the porch of the house, though. But I still wonder if it might have been him. My family and I have always been animal lovers. I've never known a time when we didn't have cats or dogs with us, and I feel like they helped raise me. When my father was in college, he adopted two cats named Tigger and Cito. Tigger passed away due to a coyote, and after she passed, Cito was never the same. She was grumpy and preferred to be by herself, but I would annoy her with my love anyway. One night, I was carrying her in a wicker basket with some blankets. I would bring her room to room with me as I cleaned up. I'd been petting her and listening to her purr when she suddenly stopped moving. I was maybe 12 and I remember praying for the first time to bring her back to me. It was awful to bring her out to my mom and tell her she had passed. I had a tradition that whenever a pet died, I would make a concrete headstone with little marbles and their name on it. I had set it on our kitchen counter to dry, and I left it there. The next morning, I checked on it and found a small piece of her fur right in the center. I went around to everyone and asked if they had placed it there, and they all said that they had not. It felt like she was giving me one last piece of her. I kept it in a tiny knick-knack tea kettle. It lives there with a few of her whiskers that I had found weeks after her passing. I feel like she came to give me one last gift. I was around 24 years old at the time of this event. I have always had trouble sleeping, and I would sleep during the day most of the time. This particular day, I woke up way later than usual, and once I did, I was really confused because it was already dark outside. I started wondering what had happened to my mother because she never takes her keys with her. I'm the one who opens the door for her when she gets back from work at the end of the day, so I wondered why she wasn't home yet. I was about to grab my phone and call her when I realized some of the lights from our hallway were on. For a second, I thought I was dealing with an intruder or something, 
but I heard my mom's voice right away. How did she get inside? How come I never heard the door? I got up to make sure it was really her, and it was. When I asked her how she had gotten inside, she got really mad at me, asking if I was crazy, and told me that I was the one who had opened the door for her. I asked her how the workday was and went straight back to my room after. I never opened that door. I was sleeping. So who the hell opened it for her? The door was locked from the inside. Yes, I've already considered sleepwalking, but I've never had it, and no one has ever seen me doing it. And I think my mom would have noticed if I was sleepwalking as opposed to just opening the door as usual. To this day, I know that somebody, who apparently looked like me, opened that door, but I never did. I'm a lucid dreamer, and I can control my dreams and my nightmares. But last night, I had a dream that was very different from anything else. I was working on the floor of my factory job and running the forklift, like normal, until out the bay door there were fireworks, it's more like a plume of light and an explosion coming from the other side of the valley. I live in the desert, we don't have valleys where I'm at. We decided to go outside after seeing these lights fly away into the sky to the left of us. Once we get outside of the bay door, the ground is illuminated like a full moon times ten. We were now in the backyard of my childhood house. We look up to the sky trying to find the light source, but it was just a night sky. When we looked to the right, there was a typical looking alien and when it noticed us, it screeched and jumped up toward us but it dissolved into the brightening light. I woke up in a scream and I couldn't sleep until daylight. My cat, who's pretty aware as well, stared at the wall behind me for a good 30 minutes. Now I can dream about scary stuff and when it happens, I can usually alter it. I can always control what I'm dreaming about, but this was different and I haven't dreamed about aliens in over 10 years. What is this supposed to mean? Have they decided to come back? Why me? Every night, I walk down the stairs to the basement and then into my gaming room to unwind with some video games. As I reach the bottom of the stairs, I turn on the light, but I keep it dimmed, just so I can make my way to my room. At about midnight, it's time to go to sleep, so I open the door of my gaming room to find the lights completely turned off. I deliberately keep the switch at halfway, and when I go to the staircase, they're always pulled all the way down. I've always thought that it was my wife who would come downstairs and shut them off. I politely asked her why she would shut the lights off, and she replied, I've never gone downstairs to shut the lights off, not even once. For context, I've seen shadowy images run by in the basement. I dismissed it as being fatigue. However, when my niece was just three years old, she said that there was a boy with red eyes on the staircase. We thought it was just her childhood imagination. Then when my son was two to three years old, he ran into my arms after staring at the staircase. I asked him what was wrong. And finally he said, there's spooky with red eyes. Could entities actually physically manipulate the light switch? I can't explain what's going on. Over a decade ago, I was traveling on vacation, and I had booked hotels through some page similar to Expedia, but smaller. 
Anyway, I got to one of the cities that I was visiting, and I walked to where the hotel I booked was supposed to be. It was a construction site. I tried to call the emergency number for the webpage, but no one ever answered. I was really mad, but I figured I would just deal with my refund once I was back home, and I looked for a new place to stay. I was in the city for an event, so I knew some other people who were also there. I asked them where they were staying and decided to just get a room there. It was like a Best Western or Holiday Inn, something along those lines. Anyway, I'm checking in and the receptionist tells me I already have a paid booking there in my name. I am 100% sure I did not mix up the addresses. Also, this hotel was a completely different brand or group. I suppose the website could have rebooked me but they never informed me of it. And the address that they sent me to was nowhere close to the other hotel. There are hundreds of hotels in that city. The chance that I would randomly pick that one were pretty slim. I never did manage to speak to anybody from that webpage, but it still freaks me out just a little bit. I was sitting downstairs in the kitchen, waiting for water to boil. I was talking to my brother downstairs for a bit, and he told me that he was going to take a shower. Soon after, my brother went upstairs to go shower. I was alone by myself downstairs, sitting on a chair, playing on my phone, and facing myself toward the opened bathroom. My phone was positioned upward near my face. It's not sitting so low near the bottom. About two minutes later, out of the top of my peripheral vision, I saw my brother walking out of the bathroom, wearing clothes that I have seen him own and wear before. The top half of the shirt is white while the bottom half is black. His head was positioned and focused oddly when he was walking out of the bathroom, like straight forward. He wasn't looking at me. I felt kind of startled, so I stood up and called out to him. No one else appeared in the living room, at that moment, I remembered that my brother was upstairs in the other bathroom showering. One thing I remember is that he walked out fast, but didn't seem to completely walk all the way out. It was like he was diminished halfway through. That part freaked me out the most. It was my brother that I saw, but something was just not quite right. I've never seen a doppelganger before, and it really freaked me out. This all happened when I was a kid. I was spending the weekend at my mom's house. My parents were separated and I woke up one morning and watched some cartoons in her room while she slept. Eventually, I turned the TV off and went downstairs to make a bowl of cereal. I sat down at the table, which was about 10 feet from the open basement door. As I was eating, I heard my mom call me very loudly from the basement. The only things down there were a washing and drying machine and a toilet. I walked over to the door and peeked down there and it was pitch black. That's when I remembered that my mom was asleep upstairs and hadn't come past me at all. So I freaked out, ran upstairs to her room, and sure enough, she was there asleep. There was no way that it could have been her, and it was just us in the house. The apartment gave me off, strange, and creepy vibes. My mom and I and a few other people all hated the feeling that you would get in the basement and the back room upstairs would give off very negative energy. Every time you went in there, you would start feeling kind of sad and very alert. She never used that room. It only had a couple of boxes in it for the five or so years that she lived there. Has anyone else had similar experiences?
A couple of months ago, while I was sitting in a car wash, my music stopped, which always occurs when a call comes through. I looked at the media system to see who was ringing. It said, ma'am, M-A-M. -M. I went to answer and nobody was there and the call ended. Ma'am isn't really common here, but it is what I called my mom and how she signed off on her birthday cards. She was never ever stored in my phone as ma'am though. It was always under dad and it still is because they only had one landline between them. No missed or received calls on my phone were logged during that time. The thing is, my mom's been dead for a while now. Three years, in fact. I shrugged it off as stress, except yesterday it happened again when I was driving. My husband was in the passenger seat and he saw it with his own eyes. It occurred three times. The first time, the line was open for at least a minute but nobody spoke. The second time, a bit shorter, and the third time, mere seconds. My husband is a complete skeptic, but he can't explain this, and neither can I. I did think maybe it was a spoofed number, but again, there's no record of the calls. It's like they never happened. So for slight context, I'm 22, and as my mom was pregnant with me, my grandfather passed away from lung cancer. The only thing he ever got me was this little clown doll that was supposed to hang over my crib. When you pull down the clown's legs, they stretch out, the whole body does, and it plays the little music box style song as it winds itself back up. The tune slowly stops over the course of about two minutes as the clown slowly goes back up to where it started. Now, I know this already sounds like a cheesy horror story setup, but stick with me. When I was a child, maybe seven or eight years old, I used to have the clown hanging from the metal curtain tiles back in my room, probably because I was too young to have read or watched it. But one night, my mom walked up the stairs and into my room while I was asleep because the clown was playing its song, but it hadn't had its legs pulled down. It apparently played for about five minutes, abruptly stopped and never wound down. I do remember that my mom had recorded it on her old flip phone and showed me in the morning. We found out later in the day that on that night, my great grandma had passed away. So my grandfather's mom. My mom is super adamant that it was her dad sending some sort of signal, but I would be interested to know what you guys think.